Umpire Shag Clapper steps in from behind home plate. Calls play ball, and the second game of the National League playoffs underway is Dave Cash, a right-hand batter. Second baseman steps in to face John Cumberland. And here's the first pitch of the second game. That uh, slow curve of Cumberland's outside, missing for ball one. Cash is in his third season in the majors, all three years as a Pirate. Cumberland has his sign from Dietz into the windup. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled at the plate. Tipped by Cash, and the count is one ball, one strike. Giants line up in the infield. Alan Gallagher at third base. Chris Fire at uh, short. Tito Polanyi second. Willie McCovey at first. The outfielders left to right are Ken Henderson, Willie Mays, and Dave Kingman. One and one the count on Cash. Gallagher's playing up on the dirt at third base. Dave Cash, who can move down that base path. Here's Cumberland in the one and one pitch. Swung on a miss. Beautiful change up curve thrown by Cumberland. He caught Cash looking for something a little faster, swinging early. And the count is one ball, two strikes. One and two on Dave Cash. Cumberland winding, and the pitch swung on, line to left field. Takes a hop in front of Henderson, and the Pirates have the first man on as Dave Cash singles sharply into left field. One hop out in front of uh, Ken Henderson. It's hard to come in, and so he couldn't get it. And the Pirates get their first bat on. Gene Kleins, the center fielder, the next batter. Kleins is making his first start. He did not play yesterday. Al Oliver, the left-hand swinger against Gaylord Perry. And today, manager Danny Murtaugh starts Kleins, a right-hand batter, against the softball John Cumberland. With Cash on first base now. On deck, Roberto Clemente. Here's Cumberland working from a stretch. Checks the runner. Pitches. A fastball that is outside. The count ball one. Gene Kleins. Right hand batter at the plate as there goes Cash off first base. Cumberland delivers. Swung on and foul tipped at the plate. And the count is one ball, one strike on Gene Kleins. Gene's a native of the Bay Area, over from San Pablo. Matter of fact, East Bay residents remember him as a graduate of uh, Richmond High over there. Makes his home now in York, Pennsylvania. Gene Kleins, right-hand batter. Count is one ball, one strike. Cash leads off first. Cumberland fires. A, an attempted bunt. Missed for strike two. One and two, the count on Kleins. Trying to lay one down, pushing down first base. Missed the pitch on a slow breaking curve down low on the outside. And the count is one and two now on Gene Kleins. Alan Gallagher with two strikes on Kleins. Backs up to normal depth of third base. Again, here's the pitch. A curve that hangs high on the outside, missing for ball two. Two and two now on Gene Kleins. Cumberland about to face the power of the pirate attack in Roberto Clemente and Willie Stargell. And now with a 2-2 count on Kleins, Cash leads off first base, nobody out. A throw to first, chasing uh, Cash back in. Gets in under the throw. Cash can move on that base path. Cumberland trying to cut down the lead. Here's the pitch. A fastball high, and the count is ball three in strike two. Three and two on Gene Kleins. Was close just off the shoulders, and Gene uh, had a notion to swing, then checked up just in time. Three and two, the full count. As Cash leads off first. He could be going on the three and two pitch. He goes, he swung, he missed. The throw to second base. He's out, double play. was going, stealing, Klein struck out, and the throw from Beach to Tito Fuentes, perfect on the bag, and thrown out trying to steal was Dave Cash. Interested in knowing how you may save money on homeowners and insurance, then talk to the good hands people at any Sears store in Northern California, or stop in or phone the neighborhood Allstate office. You're in good hands with Allstate. Two men down on the double play strikeout, and Roberto Clemente is at the plate for the Pirates. Roberto was 0 for 4 yesterday. 
341 average for the year, the base setter for the Pirates at the plate. Here's Cumberland's pitch. Swung on, a bounder back of second base, cutting over Spires. Got it. The throw to first is not in time. Safe at first base is Roberto Clemente. It was a ground ball, hit deep behind the bag at second base. Spire got over, got it. Could not get set to make the throw. Had to throw on the move, and his throw was just a step late to get Roberto Clemente at first base and hit the infield single. Put one on with two men down, and that brings up Willie Stargell. Stargell, the power hitting uh, left hand swinging, left fielder, 0 for 4. Stargell is the only left hand batter in this uh, Pirate lineup this afternoon to face Cumberland. As Clemente now takes his lead off first base, Cumberland fires a fastball inside, and the count is ball one. Stargell, who hit 295 during the regular season, but went hitless in four tries against Perry yesterday. There's Clemente leading off first. The pitch, a curve on the inside corner, caught it, and the count is one ball, one strike. One on the count on Willie Stargell. We're in the first inning of the scoreless ball game, the second game of the National League playoffs, matching the Pirates against the Giants here on a beautiful day in San Francisco. Again, Clemente leads off first base. As Cumberland pitches to Stargell, swung on, tried to check up, a ground ball hit near second base, fires on the back for the first out, and the side retires. Willie Sargent grounds out into an easy force play at second base. Clemente out, beats unassisted. So in the first inning for the Pirates, no runs, two hits, no errors, and one man left on. The Pirates scoreless, and we go to the last half of the first. The score, San Francisco upcoming for the first time, nothing, and the Pirates nothing. Last half of the first inning upcoming here at Candlestick Park, where it's nothing, nothing. In case you just joined us, Dave Cash Fingling to start the ball game, then throwing out as part of a double play as Gene Kleins was striking out. Cash running on the pitch on a three and two pitch. And then Roberto Clemente singling, but was left on as Willie Stargell forced him at the second base. So the Pirates with a couple of base hits with one left on, and the Giants have their first crack now at Doc Ellis. Ellis facing Ken Henderson, the first giant batter of the afternoon. Ken switch hitting, of course, and batting left against the right-hand throwing Doc Ellis. Ken got two for four yesterday. Ellis fires a fastball right down the middle for a called strike. Nothing and one, the count on Ken Henderson. Tito Fuentes on deck, batting number two, and followed, of course, by Willie Mays. Infield shifted around to the right, playing Henderson full. The pitch by Ellis swung on foul, tipped at the plate, and the count is two strikes on Ken Henderson. Ellis is now in his fourth year in uh, major leagues, and all four seasons, of course, with the Pirates. Broke into baseball eight years ago. Tall, six foot three inch right hander ahead of Henderson with two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled off. Ken pulls it down the first baseline over past the giant dugout. The count remains two strikes on the giant leadoff hitter, Ken Henderson. First, this winds up the first two games of the series for the travel day tomorrow, and then the third game of the series. into the wind up the pitch changes the face a curve up high two and two across the eyes of Henderson and let it go two balls two strikes on Ken Henderson Ellis will rely on his speed for the most part when he's uh, pitching under pressure when he's uh, got a pitch that he has to uh, bread and butter uh, pitch he has to work with two and two pitch here it comes slow curve swung on popped up on the left side going over to get it under it and Jose Pagan taking it at the bag as Henderson pops up on a two and two pitch for the first giant out of this ball game. Next batter, Tito Fuentes, the second baseman. Fuentes comes up for the first time and gets a well deserved hand as Tito came through again in the clutch yesterday. Fuentes with that two run homer, one for four in the series and a 273 hitter for the year. Crowding in at third base comes Pagan. The pitch by Ellis is a fastball down low beneath the knees, and the count is ball one on Tito Fuentes. 
What a major role Tito played in the Giants' success this year. Next pitch by Ellis. Low for ball two. Two and nothing on Fuentes. Outfield playing straight away on the Fuentes. As Tito is set, Ellis into the wind up the pitch. Swung on a ground ball to the right side. Back ground off the glove of Dave Cash. And Fuentes is on. Tito hit a ground ball back uh, to the left of uh, Dave Cash at second base. He couldn't hold it. It got back about six feet past him. And beating it out for a base hit, Tito Fuentes. Hey, here's a reminder from the phone company for you. If you ever reach a wrong number while dialing long distance, be sure to call the operator and let her know. She'll see you're not charged for that misdialed call. Here's Willie Mays stepping in. Tito Fuentes off first base. May set as Ellis checks the runner. The pitch is a fastball. Gets through Sandia. There goes Fuentes to second base. Taking a turn to right to third. The throw to Pagan, and he is safe to third. The ball got through Manny Sandia and Pagan. Fuentes, running like a flash, did not slow at all, going right around second base to third base, and then beat the recovery throw by Sandia down to Pagan, and the Giants, with a big break, have a runner at third and only one man down. The count of ball, the check whether that was a fastball or a wild pitch. Here's the pitch by Ellis, fastball inside on Mays, backs him off, and the count is ball two. That was a pass ball charged against Sam Gian, letting it get through, on which Fuentes uh, went from first to third. The pitch to May, swung on, he was deep left to the field, tries to charge it back, it's over, trying to off the wall. Fuentes is scoring, and May goes to second with a stand-up double. a double back between Fines and Stargell and bounced one hop off the screen at about the 380 foot mark. Fuentes walking in from third base and Mays with a two base hit and the Giants have the first run of the ball game. Willie McCovey steps in and that puts somebody to work in the Pittsburgh bullpen now as McCovey who had the one home run in three trips yesterday. They're motioning outside. They're going to put McCovey on. up down there in the uh, bullpen now for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I believe that's Johnson, Bob Johnson, a right-hander, warming up as Ellis in early trouble here in the first inning. Tito Fuente singling infield, then moving from first to third on the pass ball of San Gians, checking in on a line drive double to left center field by Willie Mays. So with Mays now at third base, and McCovey at first, Stepping in is Dave Kingman. The intentional pass, of course, to McCovey. Kingman was 0 for 3 yesterday. The crowd urging uh, the rookie from USC on here. Now, Willie May at second base. Willie McCovey at first. Doc Ellis. Pitching in trouble here in the first inning with only one man down. The Giants lead it one to nothing. Here's Ellis ready to pitch. Kingman takes inside. Crowding the plate, he had to move back, pull his chin back just in time. A one ball count on Dave Kingman. Dick Deets on deck for the Giants. Last half of the first inning. Giants with two men on. Mays off second, McCovey off first. Kingman the batter. Here's Ellis looking back at second base. And comes to the plate. Kingman follows it off his... He wasn't actually swinging. Started just to check back. Ball hit the handle of his bat. Ricocheting back toward the giant dugout. And the count is one ball, one strike. Here's Ellis again ready. Ball right-hander. Pitches to Kingman. Swung on. A fly ball. Hits the short center. Going back. Hernandez in his line. It's dropped in the center. Mays around third, holds up as a throw into the plate. And the base is loaded for San Francisco. A fly ball hit.
hit by Kingman into short center field. Jackie Hernandez raced back. Gene Fines came racing in, but needed to get it. It dropped between them. Mays couldn't go too far down the line from second base. Had the ball been caught, of course, and had to hold it third. So the bases are loaded for San Francisco. Three men on, and Dick Deets is the batter. Bob Johnson continues to warm up down there in the Pirate bullpen. As Ellis in early trouble, Giants lead one to nothing. Only one man down in the first half of the in the last half of the first inning. And now Ellis working on Dick Deets, who was 0 for 4 yesterday. Here's the pitch. A fastball is inside, and the count is ball one on Dick Deets. Ellis watching Mays lead off third base now. McCovey down the line from second, and Dave Kingman off first. As Deets cocks the back, here's Ellis into the wind up the pitch. A curve that caught the outside corner. Deets doesn't think so, looks around at Jack Crawford. The count is one ball and one strike. One and one on Dick Deets. Beautiful breaking curve thrown that time by Doc Ellis. Alan Gallagher on deck. Here's Ellis working with the bases loaded. Gets his sign from San Guillen. And here's the pitch. Foul back over the screen by Deese. And the count is one ball, two strikes. One and two. Ellis has a new ball with which to work, and he's set. As the crowd urges Deese on here. One and two. Ellis ahead of Deets. Here's the motion. The pitch is a fastball. Just misses outside. And the count is two and two on Dick Deets. Dick, of course, in this situation can't be too choosy. And just at that last moment, let that go by. Had a good eye on it. And the count is two and two. Ellis checks those runners. Three men on. Giants ahead one nothing. Last half of the first. Looks at Mays at third. The 2-2 pitch to Deets. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. As Dick Deets swung on a slow-breaking curve on the outside, a great pitch by uh, Doc Ellis. First strikeout for Doc, and with two men down, Alan Gallagher is the batter. That's a big one for Doc Ellis. Takes the pressure off of those bases loaded with two men down, trying to escape what could be a disastrous first inning here. One run across by which the Giants lead it, one nothing, and Alan Gallagher steps in. He was 0 for 2 in yesterday's first game. Here's Ellis into the windup. The pitch, a swing, line drive foul down the right field line. And the count is one strike on Alan Gallagher. He saw that ball was in the strike zone and took a late cut at it and hit it off uh, to the right side. One strike to count on Gallagher. Giants have the bases loaded. Willie Mays at third, Willie McCovey at second, and Dave Kingman at first. Two men down. Ellis facing young Alan Gallagher at uh, the plate. One strike to count. Pirates with two down, of course. The infield back at normal depth. Here's the wind up the pitch. Swung on. Again, fouled off down the right field corner. And it's two strikes on Gallagher. Manny Sandian gets a new baseball from Shag Crawford and trots out the mound with it now to talk personally with Doc Ellis. They have Gallagher in a hole now with two strikes on him, and uh, Ellis can afford to waste one or two here and try to make him go after something, not give him too good a pitch. So the pressure on Gallagher now. The three runners leading off for the Giants. Two men down and two strikes on Gallagher. Ellis delivers, fastball low, and on the inside, the count is one ball, two strikes. We have a final score in from Baltimore. The Orioles coming from behind to beat the A's this afternoon, 5-3 to three in their first game of the playoffs after the A's had a 2-0 lead early in that game. 1-2 and two the count now on Gallagher as Allen sets himself. Ellis working carefully, making him wait, and time called is Manny Sanguian. Ellis was looking in for that sign for a long time, and finally Sandian calls time, and he wants to go out and talk to his pitcher. Understandable in a situation like this, as Ellis got Deets on a strikeout for the second out, and he's trying to pitch very carefully to Alan Gallagher. 
We'll have a line score on that Baltimore-Oakland game for you in just a moment. Now, one ball, two strikes, and Ellis ready again. The three runners taking their leads. Ellis in the windup. Here's the pitch. A fastball low and outside. Ball two. It was close. Two balls, two strikes. So after being ahead of Gallagher with two strikes, Ellis throwing two balls now to even things out. Mays off third, McCovey off second base. Kingman off first. Two men down as Ellis again winds and pitches. Swung on a ground ball to the right side. Hit the cash. Dave has it. Throws the first for an easy out. And the side is retired as Gallagher grounds off to second base to end the Giants' threat of the first inning, but not until Ellis surrenders his first run of the ball game and the Giants have the lead. For San Francisco's first inning, one run on three hits, no errors for the Pirates, and the Giants lead three men on. We're going into the top of the second. The score, San Francisco one and Pittsburgh nothing. Let's pause for station identification, this being the Golden West Radio Network. Likely at this stage of the game, I'm not the least bit concerned. What I'm thinking about is the World Series on KSFO in San Francisco. First half of the second inning, Giants lead it one to nothing over the Pirates as John Cumberland now works on Bob Robertson, the first Pirate batter of the second inning. Robertson, the first baseman, takes the first pitch for a called strike. Bob, a right-hand batter, Cumberland throws low and away, and the count is ball one and strike one. Robertson came up with two hits in four trips yesterday against the Gaylord Perry, two for four in the series, a 271 hitter for the year. Bob swings, foul tips it right at the plate, and that ball might have hurt Deets a bit. He's on his knees down at the home plate. Foul tip off the bat of Bob Robertson. That uh, Baltimore uh, open game, as we mentioned, Baltimore coming from behind to beat the A's, five to three. By the Blue suffering a loss in that ball game. Dave McNally getting the Oriole victory. Oakland with three runs, nine hits, and no errors. Baltimore with five runs, seven hits, and one errors. The Orioles won it with a big seventh inning, four runs, in which they overcame a two to nothing lead. The A's had scored twice in the first inning, got one more in the fourth. Baltimore one run in the fourth, and then wrapped it up with four run rally in the seventh. Dates is okay, and here again is John Cumberland working on Robertson. Swings, gets a ground ball foul down on the field line, just outside the bag at third base. And the count is one ball and two strikes. One and two on Bob Robertson. Manny Sanguian, the catcher, is on deck. Number three uh, batter in this inning, Jose Pagan. Cumberland again winds and pitches, fouled off by Robertson, back up into the right, uh, on the right side behind the giant dugout. And the count remains one and two on Bob Robertson. The Pirates uh, got a couple of hits in the first inning. Dave Cash starting off with a single, but he was picked up trying to steal second on a strikeout for a double play. Roberto Clemente single, and then was forced out to end the inning. Cumberland again works. A curve down low on the inside, missing for ball two. Two and two on Bob Robertson. again goes into the windup. John fires a curve down low on the inside and pulling away from it. Robertson jumps away and the count is three and two now. Full count on Bob Robertson. Robertson is fourth season as a pirate, his seventh year in the game. Here's the next pitch. Swung on, line down the left field line, curving foul going out across the pirate bullpen and the count remains full on Bob Robertson at three and two. To mention he's been uh, with the Pirates for four years. He missed the entire 68 season due to surgery. About coming back fine the last uh, three years now. Here's the windup. Cumberland pitches. Swung on by the again down the left field line. A face hit into the corner as Robertson takes the turn at first base into the corner. Ken Henderson throws it back in with a stand up double. Robertson at second base for the Pirates. That ball was well tagged between Gallagher and the bag at third base. No chance for Allen to get it. And with Robertson on second base, the tying run potentially for the Pirates in scoring position. That brings up Manny Sanguian. Sanguian, the catcher, who picked up uh, a single in four tries yesterday. Sanguian hit 319, one of the two 300 hitters in the Pirate lineup this year. The other, of course, being Roberto Clemente, who led the club. 
And now Robertson leads off second base. Giants lead it one to nothing in the first half of the second inning. Cumberland checks the runner. The pitch swung on a ground ball back at second base. Where he couldn't get it into the center field to face hit. Robertson comes in to score, and it's a tie ball game. Robertson checking in from second base as Manny Sanguian singles sharply back behind second base. When he's trying to get a back ass off on it, couldn't. And the Pirates have their first run of the game. And that brings up Jose Pagan. Giants have some action in the bullpen now. That's Bob Barr, or rather Jim Barr, warming up down there for the Giants. Right-hander from uh, USC. Jim Barr warming up for San Francisco as Cumberland has some trouble here now in the second inning. Jose Pagan, the next pirate batter, right-hand swinger. The pitch, a called strike. That ball just above the knees. Count is one strike on Jose. Pagan making uh, his first appearance of the series. As a starter, the look at first base by Cumberland. Pitch curve is high and away, and the count is ball one, strike one. Jackie Hernandez, the shortstop, is on deck for the Pirates. And off the back at first base goes Manny Sanguian. The pitch is a fastball that's wide for ball two, two and one. Jose Pagan, who of course needs uh, no introduction in these parts. A giant for six years. Seven years of the majors now. There goes Sanguian. The pitch swung on. A ground ball foul down to the left. Hit and run on. And uh, Pagan fouls it off. Sanguian breaking with the pitch. And the count is two and two now on Jose Pagan. Cumberland again gets his sign from Dick Deets. As Sanguian leads off first, the pitch swung on, a ground ball hit the short, Spires got it, close to the one, for one, down to first, and he is safe at first base. Just beating it by a half stride, Jose Pagan broke up the double play. So with one man down to run with first, Jackie Hernandez, the batter. Most things at a garage sale are used. At your Chevy dealers, everything is brand new. All those new Chevelles, new Novas, new Impalas, and new everything else are at the lowest price of the year. So visit our garage. You'll be surprised. Jose Pagan at first base after forcing San Guillen. Spired to uh, Poetis. Governor looks over at first pitches inside Hernandez for ball one. Jackie was one for two yesterday, a 205 hitter for the regular season. One to one tie score, first half of the second inning. Here is Cumberland. Checks the runner off first base. Here's the pitch to Hernandez. Swung on and missed. And the count is one ball, one strike. This is Hernandez's first year with the Pirates. American leaguer with the California, the Twins, and Kansas City prior to coming to Pittsburgh. Sixth year in the majors. Pass from his feet, and Malin Gallagher is pulled in just a bit at third base. McCovey holding against Pagan at first. Here's the stretch by Cumberland. The pitch is swung on, fouled up, back out of play to the right side, and the count is one and two on Jackie Hernandez. In case you just joined us, the Giants scored their first run in the first inning. This is the second. Fuentes on a single. Willie Mays then doubling him home after Fuentes went from first to third in a pass ball. The Pirates have evened things up with the double for Robertson, checking in on San Guillen's single. Here's the pitch. A fastball is outside for the Hernandez, and the count is two and two. Doc Ellis, the pitcher, is on deck for the Pirates. As there goes Pagan off first base. The pitch to Hernandez. Swung on. He struck him out as Hernandez went after that slow curve. 
Cumberland throws a slow change of pace that breaks away from a right-hand batter in much the same way as a screwball, although he turns his wrist over when he lets it go. It's not actually a screwball in the same sense that Marichal throws. But that appeared to be breaking away from Hernandez, who is a right-hand batter. And with two down now, Doc Ellis comes to the plate. First trip for the Pirate pitcher this afternoon. That, by the way, was the second strikeout for Cumberland this afternoon. The pitch to Ellis, a fastball inside. And the count is ball one. The ninth batter to face Cumberland out of the previous eight. John's given up four hits, striking out two. Two men down as Pagod leads off first. The pitch, Ellis swings and misses for strike two. Slow curve along the inside thrown that time by Cumberland. John again checks the gun off first base. The pitch is a curve to caught the inside corner. Looking at it was Ellis. And the count is one and two on the Pirate pitcher. Jim Barr continues to warm up leisurely down there in the giant bullpen. Here's Cumberland ready again. The pitch. A fastball is outside. Just missed and the count is even. Two and two on Doc Ellis. Cumberland's next pitch is swung on the ground and foul down off the right field barrier back into the special uh, box seat set up out in front of the right field stands. And the count remains two and two here on Doc Ellis. Pagan still takes his lead at first base. The next pitch is fouled back over the head of Dick Peets as Ellis just got a piece of there and stays alive at the plate. Cumberland getting a new ball. Here again, John's ready. There goes the dot off first base. He looks at him, fires a fastball inside, and it is ball three, strike two. Three and two on Doc Ellis. This is something that Cumberland obviously would rather avoid in walking the pitcher because he then would have to go to the top of the order with a run in scoring position on deck should they get to him as Dave Cash. So this is a big pitch for Cumberland. Three and two as Pagan will be breaking. There he goes. The pitch is a called strike on the outside corner. He struck him out. As Ellis goes down looking at a third called strike, and Cumberland avoids further trouble, striking out two men in this Pittsburgh second inning. As the Pirates get the tying run, one run on two hits, no errors, and one man left on. We're moving to the last half of the second inning, and the score is the Giants one and the Pirates one. Get a pack or two. Last half of the second inning coming up here at Candlestick Park. By the way, in case you missed the 49er game today, the 49ers beating the Philadelphia Eagles 31 to 3. This is Don Klein sitting in for Lon Simmons, who uh, will be joining Bill Thompson over in Pittsburgh Tuesday for the third game of this National League playoff action. And here we go into the Giants' second inning with Chris Fire, the first San Francisco batter, facing the Pittsburgh right-hander Doc Ellis. score all tied, one to one. Spire, Cumberland, and Henderson, the first three giant batters. First pitch inside. Spire pulling back, takes it for a ball. Ellis got out of a very bad jam. Bases loaded with only one down. Survived it with the one run scored against him. Here's the next pitch. Swung on by Spire, fouled off, and the count is one and one on Chris. Young shortstop got two for three yesterday in the opening game of the series, and Chris hit 235 for the regular season. Crowding at third base right now is Jose Pagan. Here's the pitch. Spire swings, drives it into left center field for a base hit. Ball back deep between Pines and Sargo. Spire rounds first on his way to second. Pines has the ball, and Spire holds with a stand-up double. That ball was hit just about the identical spot of Willie Mays game scoring double in the first inning. A liner hit by Chris Wright on the nose out between Clients and Stargell. And on second base with a double, Chris Fire leads it off for the Giants. Their go ahead run in scoring position with nobody out. See if there's anyone more loyal than a San Francisco Giant fan, it must be a member of that beer drinking brotherhood of ham. Ham staff and regular is brewed with only pure natural ingredients. 
Jose Pagan and Manny Sanjia come out from all the talk to talk, Ellis, as he now faces John Cumberland. They're looking for John to lay a bunt down, both Robertson and Pagan crowding at third base. He puts fire one spot closer to home plate as they come to the top of the order. Uh, bunt laid down perfectly by Cumberland, fielded by Pagan, throwing to first base as Cash covers there, and a perfect sacrifice for John Cumberland. Moves fire to third base with one away, and that brings up leadoff hitter Ken Henderson. Here's scoring with us today. That's five to four on the put out for Cash at first base covering as Robertson breaking into the butt. And now with Ken Henderson switch hitting and batting left, Ken popped up to third his first time. There's more action over there in the Pittsburgh bullpen again. Here's the pitch, swung on, right in the right field, it's a base hit. Coming across the scores, fire, and Henderson puts the Giants ahead with a single. Henderson hit his first pitch, a liner into right field. Fire from third base scoring easily, of course. And the Giants, for the second time today, have a one-run lead. Two to one, the score, and that brings up Tito Poletti. Started the Giants on their scoring uh, way today with a single back off the glove of Dave Cash, then advanced the third in the pass ball, going from first to third, and checked in on Willie Mays' subsequent double. And now off first base goes Ken Henderson. The pitch is swung on, popped up back at second base, going back is Hernandez, coming in as Clines. He calls it, and Clines got it. He almost lost that ball in the sun. Back to first, the throw back in time is Henderson. Finds in trouble with that sun that bothered uh, them here yesterday. At this time of year, evidently it has a little different play in the outfield angle than it does during the normal season. And Finds was lucky to get that ball down around his knees at the last moment. It almost dropped in there. So that's two down as Bruni flies to center field, and that brings up Willie Mays, who doubled the first time to drive in the first giant run. San Francisco ahead of Pittsburgh, two to one. We're in the last half of the second inning here at Candlestick Park. Covey on deck should they get to him, of course. There are two men down now. Henderson taking his lead off first base. May set. Infield deep on the left side. The pitch is a pass ball high for ball one. Outfield playing Willie. Many things shading a bit toward the left side, but of course, as you know, Willie hits the raw fields, and they're playing him deep. Hernandez back on the edge of the outfield turf. A pitch to swing of down to second base and shooting second base is Ken Henderson. Henderson going as Mays was swinging and Henderson steals second base. So that's a big move for the Giants to get Henderson in scoring position with the two men down. Mays, one and one, swinging and missing on a fastball that was up across the shoulders. Giants lead two to one here as Willie is set again. Sanguian stepping out in front of the plate. They go all the way to the mound to talk. Here comes Ellis down off the mound to talk with him to get things straightened out as to how to pitch the maze under this particular circumstance. Matty comes back behind the plate as Henderson leads off second base. Now the stretch by Ellis, the pitch to Mays. Will he swing? It's a pop fly back at first base. It is caught by Bob Robertson. Robertson going back. It was off the end of his bat. Will he actually checking up? And Robertson got back just in time to get the pop up off the bat of Willie Mays to end the Giants' second inning after they break the tie, scoring one run on two hits. There were no pirate errors, and one Giant was left on. So at the end of two full innings here at Candlestick Park, the second game of the National League playoffs, the score reading, the Giants 2 and the Pirates 1. First half of the third inning here at Candlestick Park. Cloudless skies overhead in San Francisco. A perfect day for baseball. The third inning of the second game of the playoffs. The Giants lead it 2-1. to one, And stepping up for the Pirates is leadoff hitter Dave Cash. John Cumberland works his first pitch at the third frame and fires a strike across the knees. Taken by Cash. 0-1 the count. Gene Kleins is on deck. Roberto Clemente, the number three batter for the Pirates. 
in this third inning as here's Cumberland again winding the pitch is swung on and this for strike two great curve from that time by Cumberland cracked across the inside edge on uh, the swinging Dave Cash 0-2 the count Cash has three for six in the series now got a single his first time the pitch swung on and foul tipped right at the plate Beats couldn't hold it and the count remains two strikes on Cash Dave uh, after singling Gene Kleins with a count three and two struck out and Cash going was thrown out with a perfect throw from Beats as part of a double play in the first inning on the Pirates Beats might have got that foul tip on the meat hand again second time today for Dick here's the wind up a pitch by Cumberland fastball is high and away and the count is one ball two strikes one and two on Dave Cash first batter for the Pirates in the third inning Cumberland again works Cash swings it's ground ball back of second going over Colinney's gives it over to Spire to make the throw and good Colinney's with a quick move saw that he was going to be out of position previous time this year we've seen that work as he was his momentum carrying over towards Spire coming across and in a shovel motion, Fuentes gave the ball to Spire to throw, but by then it was too late. Cash, the leadoff batter, has speed to spare down there. He was across the bag before Spire could get rid of the ball. Heads up play on the one of Fuentes, but the Pirates nevertheless get their first man aboard. So Cash is on, and that brings up Gene Kleins. And Cash is two for two. Jim Barr is starting to tune up again down in the giant bullpen with the Pirates now putting the tying run aboard in this third inning. Kleins, Clemente, and Stargell, the three batters facing uh, Cumberland now, and Klein steps in. A strikeout victim, his first time, one of three so far for Cumberland in the first two innings. And now Dave Cash leading off first base. Cumberland stretches, looks over there, here's the pitch, swung on, driven to right field, there goes Kingman over, he's got it, a throw back to first base, and back in time is Cash, Kingman got a beat on that ball, kept it in his sights, and ran over to take it, strike fell high. Today's action being brought to you by Kingman, the action aid gasoline. 23,000 standard stations and Chevron dealers nationwide. So with one man down, stepping up is Roberto Clemente. Pirates' top hitter of the season. And the pressure on Cumberland now here. With the cash on first base. And Cumberland facing Clemente and Willie Stargell on. Cash takes his lead as Cumberland works. Fastball uh, outside, way outside. Slipped off for John's delivery, and the count is ball one on Roberto Clemente. Byron Fuentes back at double play depth, and as a matter of fact, Gallagher. Deep, of course, up there with hard hitting Roberto Clemente at the plate. And the stretch again, the look at first base. The pitch, Clemente swings at the fly ball down the right field line. Kingman chasing it over into the bullpen. He's under it, he's got it. to the right field bullpen where the giant pitchers gave way for Dave Kingman to come in to get that one. And that's a big one for John Cumberland with two men down now facing Willie Stargell. Clemente, by the way, had singled infield in the first inning and was later forced out to end that first frame. As Stargell steps in, he's 0 for 1 after forcing Clemente in that first inning. Now Cash leads off first. Giants ahead here, 2-1 to one in the first half of the third. The pitch is swung on a miss for a strike. And the Sergeant was pulling out all the stops that time. Deep in right field is Dave Kingman. As a matter of fact, they're deep on Sergeant all around. About 10 feet back beyond the edge of the outfield turf, in fact. Tito Fuente is playing Sergeant that deep at second. Here's the pitch. Swung on, a high fly ball again, hit to the giant bullpen. Coming in is Kingman. That one's going out of play, however. No chance up about 10 rows into the seat. Out of reach of Kingman. And the count is two strikes now on Willie Stargell. The only left-hand batter being used today by Danny Murtoff to face the southpaw, John Cumberland of the Giants. Oh, and two the count. And this is the way any pitcher likes to be when facing Stargell. 
Cumberland can play around the edges now. Here's the pitch, but he's outside a bit too far, and the count is one ball, two strikes on Sigel. Willie looking for his first hit of the series, and this is sixth trip. And off first base goes Cash. The pitch. He checks up, and it is the ball inside. And Deep doesn't like the ball, and neither does the crowd now. Sigel almost broke his wrist on it as he checked up just in time. Again, here, as I mentioned, is the advantage that Cumberland has in working inside, and Sigel can't be too choosy. The count is two balls and two strikes. Again, Cash leads off first, the pitch. He struck him out. Sigel that time started to check up and let it go by. He actually, uh, whether that'd be a swing strike, it's a half swing. At any rate, it was through the knees for the strikeout. And John Cumberland, pitching after allowing the first man up to get on base, got signs and Clemente on fly balls and then strikes out Sarger to end the inning. His fourth strikeout of the ball game. No runs, one hit, no errors, and the one man left. And after two and a half innings, the score remains the Giants two and the Pirates one. McCovey, the first giant batter of the giant third frame, well, he passed intentionally in the first inning was left aboard, and Doc Ellis on the mound for the Pirates is ready. Giants lead it two to one. The pitch is a fastball high, and the count ball one on Willie McCovey. Giants so far with uh, two runs on five hits. The Pirates with one run on five also. The pitch swung on to the high and foul down the right field line out of play. men on base. The Giants, after leading them loaded in the first inning, one more in the second, have left four stranded. The pitch swung on by McCovey, again grounded foul down to the right, and the count is one ball, two strikes on Willie McCovey. Dave Kingman on deck to be followed then by Dick D. Infield uh, swung way around to the right. Danny Murtaugh leaving his shortstop, Jackie Hernandez, out behind second base, actually on the shortstop side of second. McCovey checks up and takes a fastball down low. Count is two and two. And catcher Manny Sandia looks out the third base umpire, Dick Stell, asking for an overruling on the call by Shag Crawford of the plate, thinking that McCovey had swung on it. But Stello corroborates Crawford's opinion. Here's the pitch. A swing and a ground ball foul back into the giant dugout. And the count remains two and two on Willie McCovey. Two to one ball game. Giants lead it. Another good tight contest going here today. And this is a big one, obviously, for both clubs. Giants trying to put the Pirates back to the wall, and the Pirates trying to even things up. The pitch is swung on, a grounder foul down into the first base of the coaching box, where West Western feels it. to the count of McCovey. First batter for the Giants in the third inning. Doc Ellis. Tall veteran right-hander for the Pirates. Works to Willie. A fastball is outside for ball three. Strike two. Three and two on McCovey. I'll have some pro football scores for you in a moment. McCovey swings grounds at foul down to the right side. Repeating the fact again that the, uh, the uh, 49ers beat the Eagles today 31-3. Raiders are not playing today. They'll play a night game in Cleveland tomorrow night. Here once again, Doc Ellis is ready. Three and two on McCovey. Willie set as Ellis fires. A change-up curve high for ball four. Let's pause 15 seconds for our stations to identify themselves. This being the Golden West Radio Network. This is Jim Lang, and if I'm not the top Giants fan, I'm in the top ten anyway. And join me weekday morning, 6 to 10, right here on KSFO San Francisco. Dave Kingman, the right-hand swinging uh, right fielder, comes to plate after singling in the first inning. As McCovey leads off first, called strike, fastball belt high on the outside. The count is one strike on Dave Kingman. 
McCarty getting the second walk and the only two given up by Ellis. The first intentional. That last one was not, of course. Here's the pitch. A swing and a high pop fly. A foul ball at the plate. Coming back is Manny Sandian toward the screen. Can't reach it. Out of play. Behind the screen. And the count is two strikes on Dave Kingman. Of other final scores uh, besides the 49ers. The Jets beat Miami 14 to 10. That has to be an upset. Baltimore is expected to beat New England 23 to 3 today. Pittsburgh 21, San Diego 17. And Detroit beat Atlanta 41 to 38 in a wild one. Here's Kingman ready again, and McCovey leads off first base. Two strikes on Dave. The stretch by Ellis. The pitch is high for a ball, and it's one ball, two strikes. Just up above the shoulders on Kingman. Dave gives you a big target. He stands 6'6". McCovey again leads off first. Here's the pitch. A swing and a ground ball foul. Out of play to the left side. And the count is 1-2 and two still on Dave Kingman. Dave in his second year in baseball, of course, is first as a major leaguer. And what a big role he's played in the game since that afternoon on a Saturday afternoon when he hit a grand slam homer here against these same Pirates. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Fouled back over the screen again. And the count is still 1-2 and two on Dave Kingman. You have to figure that had not Dave suffered the appendectomy and out of the lineup for a few days, maybe that would have made the difference in easing things for the Giants. And surely Willie McCovey being out with the injured hand. Here's Ellis again. The pitch. Swung on it, brown ball back a third. Pagan has it, throws the second. Down to first, and safe at first base is uh, Dave Kingman. Force out at second base, getting McCovey as Pagan threw down to Dave Cash. So we'd like to send our congratulations to the Telephone Pioneers of America, which is the service organization made up of members of the telephone industry. This month, they celebrate their 60th anniversary. So Kingman, safe on the fourth out at second base is at first base with one man down and uh, up to the plate steps Dick Deese the pitch Dick takes the curve the broke outside and the count is ball one Alan Gallagher on deck for the Giants they lead the Pirates two to one this is the last half of the third inning Ellis looking at first throws over there Kingman back the ball bounces off Robertson's uh, glove he didn't know where it went and coming down off the mound to get it Doc Ellis Kingman had no chance to advance. It was right along the base path at first base, about halfway down the line. Both clubs with five hits. Giants have two. The Pirates have one. Last half of the third inning, Ellis and Cumberland starting the ball game. Ellis trying for what would be his 20th win after the regular season 19-9 record against John Cumberland's 9-6 and six mark for the campaign. Here again, Ellis is ready, and off the first ba uh, bag at first base goes Dave Kingman. The stretch by Ellis, the pitch is swung on, a pop fly off first base, there goes Bob Robertson into foul territory, he's under it, and has it for the out, and there are two down as Deeks fouls out the first baseman, Bob Robertson. Gallagher is the batter for the Giants. Dave Kingman on the bag at first base with two men down. Doc Ellis ready. Looks over at first. Here's the pitch. A swing and a high fly ball into center field. Gene Clines is coming over. So is Clemente and Roberto Claus at his for the out. As Gallagher flies out to right field to end the Giants third with no runs, no hits, no errors, and the one man left on. So at the end of three full innings, the score is San Francisco two and Pittsburgh one. Inning number four against Johnny Cumberland. The Pirates, the five, six, and seven spots in the batting order. First baseman Bob Robertson, catcher Manny Sanguin, and third baseman Jose Pagan. Robertson doubled him to the left field corner in the second inning, later scored the Pirate run. After three innings, the team even and hit five apiece, neither team with an error. Giants with a pair of runs, the Pirates with one. Don McMahon starts throwing the Giant bullpen along the right field line. 
Robertson moves in. Giant defense wall around to the left as Cumberland kicks and fires a fastball. It's at high near down the right field line. Twisting foul in the corner. Kingman comes over, leaps. It's a fair ball, and it's a home run. As Kingman went up into the corner, and his glove on the ball, Willie Mays racing over. The ball was twisting into the corner. Kingman come over, got his glove on the ball. The ball went off the glove and over the fence, and it goes as a home run. Robertson hits one down the right field line, into the corner. Kingman went over, appeared at least to get his glove on the ball. He leaped at the fence, was just inside the pole. My Kingman might have got the glove up into the screen that's inside the foul pole, or fair pole, if you will. The baseball came back on the field. The tie ball game, 2-2, as Robertson homers to lead off the fourth inning. Manny Sanguin, single to center in the second inning to drive in the first pirate run. Coming to the plate, 1-0. Breaking pitch, foul to the screen. A 1-1 count. Jim Barn, Don McMahon, pair of right-handers, throwing the giant bullpen along the right field line. Cumberland's pitch. Inside, brushing Sanke and back. A two-and-one count. Two-one pitch. Let up. Swung on and miss. Cumberland's screwball. Cumberland and Sanguine in a count of two and two. Fly ball foul on the right field line. This one back into the stands and back at the giant bullpen. Two and two, the count on the right-handed batting catcher, Manny Sanguian. Cumberland delivers. <coughs> Drive the center field for a base hit. Mays fields on the second bounce. Fires into second. Sanguian a big turn at first and gets back in. Charlie Fox comes out of the giant dugout. Here are the names of the September winners of the Platinum Plus Sweepstakes Contest. John W. Ryan, 2118 Whipple Avenue, Redwood City, California. And E.W. Neal, 231 Felix, Santa Cruz, California. John Cumberland will leave. And Jim Barr, the rookie from USC, will be called in. Cumberland goes three plus innings. Has given up two runs, both of them earned on seven hits. Struck out four and walked nobody. He is responsible for Sanguin at first base. Jim Barr, young fella called up at the same time Dave Kingman came up from Phoenix. And they were teammates at the University of Southern California, also at Amarillo in the Texas League a year ago, then at Phoenix. Barr comes in here in inning number four with a run in. And the runner, Manny Sanguian, at first base, and nobody out. The first inning, Dave Cash single for the Pirates was the leadoff man. Gene Klein struck out on a 3 2 pitch, and Deeks doubled up Cash at second base. But many then had an infield hit, Stargell a force out. In the second, Robertson doubled Sanguian single for a run. Gave up a leadoff single to Cumberland and a third to Cash. Here in the fourth, Robertson hit a high fly ball on the right field line that either was just over the fence or possibly even tipped over the fence by Kingman. Right in the right field corner in fair territory. The home run is tied it up. Sanguian fouled with a single, and that's all for Cumberland as Jim Barr comes on. (laughs) 
Giants had a chance to break this one wide open in the first inning. Henderson popped up, but when he's had an infield hit, Mays doubled him home. McCovey intentionally walked. Kingman blew the single to center to load the bases. But Deep struck out. Gallagher grounded out. The Giants had to settle for a run. They got their second run in the second inning when Spire doubled as a leadoff man, was sacrificed to third by Cumberland, and scored on Henderson's single. Richie Hebner will be a pinch batter for Jose Pagan, and Hebner will undoubtedly stay in the lineup to play at third base. Hebner, left-handed batter, takes over for the right-handed batting Pagan. As far as completed his warm-up. Hebner at the plate. Hebner played in yesterday's ball game. Had one base set. Right-hander Jim Barr set. First pitch, high, ball one. Sanguin at first, nobody out. A run in, top of the fourth, score side, 2-2. Two, two. Barr set. Bound ball foul to the right, strike one. A one and one count on Hefner. Barr looking to Deeks for a sign. That defense straight away. The infield may be a step to the right, the outfield straight away. A one and one pitch. High ball two. Barr drops behind on Hebner. Two balls and one strike. Sanguin will lead it first. Barr throws over there and Sanguin back in. Sanguin leads away. Quick throw to first, and Sanguin just gets back in. Barr, who has an excellent move to first base, decoyed Sanguin his first time with his move. This time made a good move to first. The pirate catcher having to dive back in under the tag. Again, the quick throw, and Sanguin, not so far away this time, moves back in easily. Count on Richie Hebner, two balls and a strike. Part of the play. <laughs> Drive to right, but foul. Hebner got a lot of that one. Bar and Hebner at a count of two and two. Sanguin edging away from first. Barr sets the belt. 2-2 two, two pitch. High ball three. Barr out to a full count on Hefner. Three balls and two strikes. On deck for the Pirates, the shortstop Jackie Hernandez. Barr taking his time. Now Jim is ready. Van Gien ready to go at first base. He is running. Pitch is called strike three. To throw to second is not in time. Hebner strikes out. But on the play, Van Gien steals second base. He's making another good throw to second. And Gian just beating the tag by Spire. Jackie Hernandez, the Pirate Church, that struck out in the second inning. Now faces Barr for the first time as Don McMahon continues to throw in the giant bullpen.
Van Gaan away from second. Barr looks back there, comes to the plate. Breaking pick, Rice in the left field for a base hit. Van Gaan heading for the plate. Henderson up with the ball, has trouble getting it out of the glove. It is not nearly in time as the throw comes all the way to the plate. Hernandez holds it first. Van Gaan scores the go-ahead run on Hernandez single to left field. Pirates lead it 3-2. to two. Pitcher Doc Ellis will be the batter. Hernandez picked on Barr's first pitch. Drilled it between Gallagher and Spire. Van Gaan, with excellent speed for a catcher, scores the run. Pirates have two, and that run charged to John Cumberland. Doc Ellis, switch batter, will now bat left-handed against right-hander Jim Barr. Diane, I think Ellis will be bunting as Gallagher is crowded in at third. Ellis around the bunt, pops it foul over the screen, strike one. A one strike count on Ellis. Bar to the plate. Ellis the bunt. Strike two. Ellis pulled the bat back, or at least he thought he did. But it was ruled that he bunted at the ball, or it was a call strike. Either way, it's an 0 and 2 count on the Pirate pitcher. Danny Murtaugh now comes out. Check with Jack Robert, the pirate manager. Murtaugh and Crawford at the moment having a very pleasant conversation. Now Crawford starts to gesture a bit. Murtaugh, arms forward with one hand at his chin. Now Murtaugh starts to gesture a bit. Robert and Murtaugh have said goodbye to the friendly aspect of the conversation. Murtaugh and Robert standing right behind the plate, and Jim Barr throwing in the Dick Deep. Tells Jeep to get behind the plate, tells Murtaugh to go to the dugout, tells Ellis to get back in the batter's box. And would you believe it, when that's all over with, the count is still 0-2. Murtaugh to lead it first. Bar ready. The 2 pitch. Foul tip on the ground behind the plate. Down behind the plate for a sign for Jim Barr. Hernandez is short lead at first base. That outfield shallow. Mays in the left center. Henderson near the line. Ellis to bunt. Bunt it foul. He's out on strike. <laughs> Ellis bunting foul on a third strike. There's a strike out for Barr. They put out the deep. Hernandez remains at first. And the Pirates go to the top of the order to second baseman Dave Cash, who is two for two. Single to left in the first and an infield hit in the third. Bounding ball up the middle, fielded by Buenes. Hernandez leads. Cash shortened up, takes the ball inside or in the inside corner for a strike. Brushing off signs. The only pitch to cash. Call strike two. Again, the fastball on the inside corner.
Don Carruthers now starts throwing the giant bullpen. Don McMahon has sat down. Hernandez bounces away from first base. Bars 0 2 pitch to catch. Bounded to shortstop. Fired to his left. Has it. Goes to Buenes. Just in time for the fourth. Cash grounds into the fourth out to retire the side. For the Pirates in the fourth, two runs on three hits. No giant errors. One runner left on. At the end of three and a half, the Pirates three, the Giants two. Before going to the bottom of the fourth, we'll pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. If you listen to KSFO for Giants baseball, be sure you also listen to me. My name is Terry McGovern. From four to eight, right here on... Chris Fire to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Fire up for his second time. The Giants right in the batting shortstop. Double the left center in the second and scored a run. Richie Hebner stays in the lineup to play at third base. Hebner who pinch batted for Pagan. Curve by Doc Ellis is a strike. One pitch to Spire. Fastball called strike two. Spire backs away, now stands back in. Jim Barr in the on deck circle for the Giants. Ellis to the plate, 0 2. Foul ball at third on one hop to Hebner. Takes his time, throws the first, throws high, but Robertson pulls it down for the out. Jim Barr, batting for his first time, a giant pitcher. That's as he pitches right-handed. One out in the bottom of the fourth. Base is empty. Pirates lead the Giants 3-2. to two. Breaking pitch is low and away for ball one. one oh pitch. Fastball. Swung on and missed. One pitch on its way. High fly ball to deep left field. Back goes Sarge all the way to the fence. He makes the catch at the fence. Jim Barr hits the drive to the fence in left field that Sarge will make with his back up against the screen for the second out. A hand for Barr as he comes back to the dugout. The Chevrolet dealers having a garage sale, and all the bargains are brand new. New Impalas, new Chevelles, new Vegas, new everything. At your Chevy dealers garage sale now. Van Gien out to talk with Ellis. Ken Henderson waits in the on-deck circle. We're outside the batter's box, now moves in. Kenny pops the third in the first inning, single the right center in the second to drive in a run. Ellis' is fastball outside for ball one. one off pitch to Kenny. Slow inside, ball two. Two up it's on its way. Way inside, ball three. Three and nothing count on Ken Henderson. Ellis back to the plate. Misses high, ball four. Third walk off Ellis. Dave Cash, the second baseman, comes running in to say something to Ellis. Step to the mound. The Pirate bullpen will get busy again as Bob Deal for one will start throwing. And Bob Johnson, the right hander, probably will get up again. Although Deal at the moment is the only pitcher up. Tito for one is an infield hit and scored a run in the first, fly to center in the second. Henderson will lead it first. Ellis' is pitch, flying down the right field line, it's looking foul. Dito 
Roped one down the right field line and hooked foul down in the corner. A one strike count. Henderson at second with two outs, bottom of the fourth. Pirates lead the Giants three to two. Henderson away from first. He is running. Pitch is grounded. Foul past first. They almost let Henderson get a running start from first base that time. Stan Gian yelling out to him now, reminding Ellis that Henderson is at first base. Winning. The count of 0 and 2. Ellis sets. Henderson with a lead. He runs again. The pitch is hit high in the air to right field. For many waiting, backing up a couple of steps, makes the catch, and the side is retired. For the Giants in the fourth, no runs, no hits, no pirate errors, a runner left on. The end of four full, the Pirates three, the Giants two. One of the Burns men will go down and firmly and act as a post. Chad Crawford talking with the Giant manager, Charlie Fox, about it. to some state of an order, at least. Gene Climbs moves in against Barr. Struck out into a double play in the first inning. Line to right in the third. Fines, right-handed batter. Gallagher shortens up at third. Barr to the plate. Breaking pitch a bit too low. Ball one there. Giants scored a run in the first. Pirates one in the second. Giants went ahead in the bottom of the second. And the Pirates got two in the fourth. Pittsburgh in front three to two as we go to inning number five. Bar to the plate. Foul of the screen. A one-one count. Fines back away. Now stands in. Now, out of the batter's box again. And now back in. 1-1 one, one pitch by Barr. Curve is high. Ball two. Barr behind on the count. Declines two balls and one strike. Two-one pitch. Fastball. Call strike two. A good pitch by Barr. Above the knees over the outside part of the plate. Two and two the count on Gene Klein's. Far to the plate. Drive the deep left. That one's got a chance. Henderson goes back. It's gone for a home run. Gene Klein rips a line drive home run over the left field fence. The Pirates lead it 4-2. to two. Don McMahon up and throwing again at the time for fence. Pirates second home run of the ball game. Robertson led off the fourth inning with a home run down the right field line. Now Klein lines one over the left field fence. Here's Roberto Clemente, an infield hit in the first, slide to right in the third. Jim Barr sits, low outside, ball one. Barr's 1-0 delivery. Call strike on the outside corner. Clemente settling himself in the batter's box. Bars 1-1 one, one pitch. Mounted up the middle. Fire behind second. Has it. Throws to McCovey. Not in time. Clemente legs it out. 
Romani with his second infield hit, and Charlie Fox comes out of the Giants' dugout. Fox walking slowly out to the mound. Looking out to the bullpen. Sign comes from Larry Jensen, the pitching coach, that McMahon is ready. And the call goes for Don McMahon. Bar goes one plus innings. Been charged with one run on three hits. Is responsible for for many at first base. Bar struck out two and walked nobody. Don McCann, 41 year old right hander, brings all in. Third time pitcher, Johnny Cumberland started. Cumberland, three plus innings, charged with three runs on seven hits. And for far as he lives. Pirates now with 10 hits. They lead four to two at Clemente at first with nobody out. And Willie Stargell waiting in the on-deck circle. He will be the next batter, the first batter to be faced by Don McMahon. When you're looking for action from your car, fill it up with one of three Chevron Action Age gasolines with F310 at your standard station or Chevron dealer. and Pirates with an off day tomorrow. Both clubs fly to Pittsburgh tonight. Game number three of the best of five series, Tuesday at Three Rivers Stadium. Air time for Tuesday's broadcast from Pittsburgh, 10, 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. McMahon has completed his warm-up, and Willie Stargell stands in. Stargell rounded into a fourth out in the first, struck out in the third. For many at first, nobody out of run in. Top of the fifth, Pirates four, Giants two. Man six. Swung on and miss. High inside fastball. Clemente, moving away from first. Man fits. Popped up. Foul and playable for McCovey or Deep. McCovey coming over and makes the catch for out number one. Sargill fouls out for the first out, and that'll bring on first baseman Bob Robertson. Today's game is being brought to you by Standard Stations and Independent Chevron Dealers, Pacific Telephone in California and Nevada Bell in Nevada, and by Gillette Platinum Plus Play. Robertson, a big gun in the fired attack today, doubled the left in the second inning, scored a run, hit a home run to right in the fourth. Robertson with two runs scored, one driven in. Right-handed batter. Time for Ritters, the giant bullpen. A many a lead, McMahon fits, swung on and missed, strike one. Robertson, big strong guy. Hill one pick. High inside. A 1-1 one, one count on Robertson. Robertson selling himself in the batter's box. Clemente wandering away from first. 
That man glances over his shoulder at Clemente. One one pitch to Robertson. Swung on it, missed strike two. McMahon in front of Robertson, a ball and two strikes. McMahon up into the set position. One two pitch, curve outside. Two and two to count on Robertson. The first game of the American League Championship Series. Baltimore scored four runs in the bottom of the seventh to beat Oakland five to three. McNally, the winner, blew the loser. For many, shortening his lead a bit at first as McMahon looks over there. Two-two pitch, swung on and missed. Good fastball by McMahon. McMahon strikes out Robertson for the second out, and Manny Sanguin, the Pirate catcher, will be the batter. Van Gien is two for two. Single to drive and a run in the second. Single, stole a base, and scored a run in the fourth. Pirates out hitting the Giants 10 to 5, leading on a scoreboard 4 to 2. McMahon in back of the mound now moves up on the rubber. Van Gien digs the toe in the batter's box. Many away from first, lengthening his lead a bit. McMahon delivers. Foul back by Sanguin. Strike one. Tuesday's third game of the series at Pittsburgh. Juan Marichal for the Giants. Probably Nelson Bryles for Pittsburgh. Luke Walker listed as a possible by the Pirate manager Danny Murtaugh. For many with his lead. The L1 fits to San Gian. Breaking ball on the dirt. Good block by Deep. A 1 1 count. The right handed batting San Gian with Clemente at first and two outs a run in. Gene Klein's leading off the inning with a line drive home run over the left field fence. Man set. A 1 1 pitch. Foul tip. Back off the mask of Shag Crawford. It's the glove of Deep first. Sanguin, almost a contortionist. Clemente edging away from first. Buckman checking signs with deep. Right hander ready. One two pitch. Runner goes. Ground ball to short. Fire will have to go to first. His throw is in time to get Sanguin for out number three. For the Pirates in the fifth, one run on two hits. No Giants errors. A runner left on at the end of four and a half. The Pirates four and the Giants two. Pussy, you got to have two cars. Talk to the good hands, people. Jordan, good hands with all states. Bottom of the fifth, the Giants trail 4-2. to two, Go to the 3-4-5 spots in the batting order. Center fielder Willie Mays, first baseman Willie McCovey, and right fielder Dave Kingman. And Gann, just now out of the dugout. And Gann retired for the final out. Taking time to put the gear on. And Gann throws the second base from his knees on Ellis's final warm-up pitch. And Mays walks up to the plate. Mays doubled the left center in the first to drive in a run. Pops the first in the second. Right-hander against right-hander. Doc Ellis to the plate. Breaking ball, low ball one. Outfield well around to the left against Mays. 
infield. It's not so exaggerated. Phillips went open. Foul back. Across the facing of the mezzanine level. Bound down to the lower seat. Ellis and Mays at a count of one and one. Ellis right back to the plate. Pop up. High in the air, playable for Robertson, the first baseman, in fair territory. Looking up, staggers around and makes the catch for out number one. Mays retired on a high pop up to the first baseman, Bob Robertson, for out number one. Willie McCovey, high first baseman, to an intentional walk in the first. An unintentional walk in the third. Pirates shift around to the right. Hernandez the shortstop directly behind second base. Hebner plays about 25 feet off the line at third. Now moves deeper. Fine drive right to Hernandez for the out. Hernandez playing McCovey perfectly. McCovey had a line drive to the shortstop. Had to catch just above the turf for the second out. Now right fielder Dave Kingman. And a blue single to center in the first inning. Safe on a fielder's choice in the third. Two out in the Giants' fifth. The Pirates lead four to two. Kingman takes high ball one. Fellas, one oh pitch. Kingman takes high again, a two and nothing count. Zero delivery of Kingman. This is inside ball three. Three and nothing count on Dave Kingman, who was in the batter's box, now backs away, looks at his right hand, reaches down, gets a handful of dirt. The on deck circle for the Giants, catcher Dick Deets. Three old pitch on its way. Low ball four. Ellis gives up his fourth walk. Dick Deets, who struck out in the first inning and fouled out the first baseman Robertson in the third, will be the Giants batter. Jerry Johnson getting up in the giant bullpen. Ellis, the set position, the pitch to deep. Breaking pitch for a strike. Kingman, a short lead at first. Throw over there by Ellis, a lob toss, no tag by Robertson. Two outs in the fifth. The Pirates lead four to two. It's the deep. Swung on and missed strike two. Deep badly fooled on a breaking pitch. Ellis in front of deep. 0 and 2. Kingman will lead it first. He is running. Pitch is popped up. In front of the plate near the mound. Hebner and Robertson come in. Robertson falls and makes the catch halfway between the plate and the mound. For the Giants in the fifth. No runs, no hits. No fire errors. A runner left at the end of five full. The Pirates four and the Giants two. Any number six, Don McMahon to face the tail end of the Pirate order. Third baseman Richie Hebner. Shortstop Jackie Hernandez and pitcher Doc Ellis. McMahon listening up with Deets. Don, third pitcher for the Giants. John Cumberland started. He was charged with three runs. Jim Barr charged with one. Doc Ellis has come all the way for the Pirates.
Hebner came into the ball game as a pinch batter for Jose Pagan in the fourth inning. Stayed in to play at third base. Hebner left handed batter. Diane will play him straight away. Don McMahon kicks and throws. Inside the knees, ball one. McMahon checking time. 1 0 pitch. Down, down goes Hebner on a breaking pitch. Round the letters. Hebner twisting out of the way of the pitch. Just sat down in the batter's box. 2 0 count. Call strike. Pitch up high in the strike zone. Nelson Bryle throwing in the Pirates bullpen. Bryle's probably loosening up for a Tuesday start. Foul back up the fifth strike two. Didn't like the baseball and tag Crawford throws it out of the ball game. Didn't even look at it. Two and two to count on Hebner. Left hand of batting third baseman. Leading off the six as the Pirates lead four to two. High inside is McMahon ball three. Very high and very inside. McMahon upset at himself for missing that batting. Three two pitch to Hebner. Swung on and missed. Strike three. McMahon gets his second strikeout. We'll pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. This is Carter B. Smith. I'm on the radio from one until four every afternoon, and I'm exuding quiet confidence because the Giants are gonna take it all. KSFO in San Francisco. First out, Jackie Hernandez struck out in the second, single to drive in a run in the fourth, right in a batter. Left the bunt, takes ball one high and inside. Hernandez, one time with the Angels in Kansas City. A one open. High inside, Hernandez goes down. The pitch wasn't that close. Two and nothing count. Hernandez walking around, standing well back away from the batter's box. Hernandez hit the dirt. Might have lost the pitch. That happens. The best thing to do is get out of there. A man behind 2 0. Fire. Pop foul. Out of play. Strike one. Again, McMahon doesn't like the baseball. Sent out by Shaq Crawford. Crawford gives him a new one and throws that one out of play. Two two count. Hernandez out of and back into the batter's box. Straight away defense for the Giants. McMahon's 2 2 delivery. Foul back into the stands. Count holds it 2 and 2. Again, McMahon doesn't like the baseball. And again, Shag Robert discards it. Wonder what happens to those? They go to the American League. Two pitch on his way. Popped up. Foul. I think playable for Dietz if he can find it in the sun. Dick looking up. Makes the catch for out number two. And that's got to be tough. High pop foul and back of the plate. Dietz having to shade his eyes with his glove. 
Stayed with it. Now deep looks up again. Fernandez fouls out the deep for the second out, and pitcher Doc Ellis will be the batter. Right-hander Bruce Keeson throws in the Pirate bullpen. Ellis called out on strikes in the second inning, struck out in the fourth inning, bunning foul on a third strike. Ellis, switch batter, now batting left-handed. Trying outfield shallow. Mays in the left center. Down ball to short. Field by Spire. Sort of McCovey. High, but the ball down by Willie for the out. For the Pirates in the sixth. No runs, no hits, no giant errors, no runners left. And at the end of five and a half, the Pirates four, the Giants two. Doc Ellis to pitch the bottom of inning number six. For the Giants, third baseman Alan Gallagher, shortstop Chris Spire, then pitcher Don McMahon due to bat third. The Carriters and Johnson throw in a giant bullpen along the right field line. No figures on the crowd as yet. Probably very close to yesterday. Possibly a bit larger. If I take a vote around the booth, it's got to be larger. Everybody says it is. <laughs> Gallagher moves in to lead it off. Over to down to the second and the first, wide to right and the third. That's got to have a hit off Ellis since the second inning. Given up some walks. Walked a batter in the third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth. The Giants get all five of their hits in the first two innings. Now to the plate. Third ball dribbled down the third baseline. Foul as Hebner charges quickly. One strike count on Gallagher. Third stop Jackie Hernandez. Only wants to get rid of his sunglasses. He does. Hernandez must know something that no one else out here knows. Everybody else seems to be having trouble with his son. Hernandez. Then says into the dugout. A one strike count on Gallagher. Doc Ellis. Kicks and throws 0-1. Foul away off the end of the bat on the right side. Strike two. Gallagher broke the bat. New one being taken out. Gallagher walking back up to the plate. With both feet on the rubber, checking signs with San Guillen. Still poised on the rubber. Now wine for the 0-2 pitch. Gallagher is plunked with a pitch in the shoulder. Gallagher throws the bat away and races to first base. Ellis hits Gallagher in the left shoulder. The pirate bullpen will get busy immediately. Chris Fire will be the giant batter. Bob Deal running down to the bullpen. Bruce Keith has been throwing, but he apparently was just taking a workout. He is setting down. Deal runs down to the bullpen. The left-hander, he will be one that will throw. Here's Chris Fire, who doubles and scored a run in the second, down to the third and the fourth. Gallagher at first, nobody out. Giants fail four to two in the sixth. Ellis Smith is rolling away, ball one. Right-hander Bob Miller, left-hander Bob Veal, throw in the Pirate bullpen. One ball, no strike, got on Spire. Ellis is six, rolling away, ball two. Good, nothing, got on Spire. Gallagher at first, nobody out. 
Infield double play deep. Outfield straight away. Ellis delivers. Foul back. Strike one. Flyer talks to himself as he walks around outside the, the batter's box. Griff thought he had a pitch to hit. A two and one count on Chris Fire. Gallagher is shortly at first. Two one pitch. Swung on a missed strike two as Ellis had to pitch past Fire. Two and two to count. Jim Ray Hart in the on deck circle. Back as a pinch batter for Don McMahon. Or we presume he will. He has not been announced as yet. Gallagher is shortly at first. 2-2 two, two pitch to Spire. Foul back off the fifth, and again, Spire took a very late swing. Just appears to be guessing breaking ball and getting a fastball from Ellis. Missed the first one completely. Just got around on this one enough to foul it back. 2-2 two two to count on a giant shortstop. Ellis ready. 2-2 two, two pitch. Belt it up the middle. Base hit. Center field. Gallagher goes to second and will hold on. As Klein hustles the ball in, Chris Fire singles sharply up the middle. Jim Ray Hart has been called back, and Frank Duffy will be the batter. Duffy will be set up to sacrifice. Billy Burton. Pirate coach walking slowly out to the mound. Burden. Danny Murtaugh's chief lieutenant walks to the mound looking towards the bullpen. Miller and Veal are throwing. Veal has warmed up a couple of times. Veal, Miller has not thrown very much. The call goes for Miller. Miller has had not had much time at all to warm up. Doc Ellis goes five plus innings. Given up two runs, is responsible for the two runners on base. He's given up six hits. Struck out one and walked four. Miller has been around. Started his professional career with the Cardinals. This year is a free agent. Went on to San Diego and did an outstanding job with the Padres. Then in a trade, before the trading deadline, Miller went over to the Pirates. With San Diego getting young outfielder John Jeter. And 27-year-old rookie pitcher Ed Acosta. Doc Ellis went into the pirate dugout, put on his jacket, and now he walks towards the clubhouse. Miller has not yet started his warm-up. Miller now starting to warm up with San Guillen. Bob Moose starts throwing in a pirate bullpen. Mentioned that Miller started his career, his major league career with St. Louis. He was also born there. February 18, 1939. First year in the big league with the Cardinals in 1957. Also been with the Dodgers, Minnesota, Cleveland, Chicago, Chicago in both leagues, then San Diego. Now Miller's completed his warm-up. Bob Moose and Bob Beal Throw in the Pirates bullpen. Jerry Johnson and Don Carritters throw for the Giants on the right. To Frank Duffy batting for McMahon.
Runners at first and second, nobody out. Gallagher at second. Fire at first. Miller sets. Dubby to punch. Takes a strike. Miller taking his time. Robertson really crowded in at first base. Hebner trying to anchor for a fourth play at third. Hernandez holding Gallagher close to second. The L1 pitch to Duffy. Bunch that foul of the screen, strike two. Duffy out of the batter's box looking at third base coach Johnny McNamara. Van Gian out to talk with Miller. to the count on Duffy. The Pirates think Duffy will still be trying to bunt. Robertson remains in at first. Hebner almost on the line and a couple of steps in front of the bag at third. Miller ready. Gallagher and Spirely to pitch to Duffy. His pop foul and the seat on a bunt. He's out on strike. But Duffy fails to move the runners along. And Kenny Henderson will be the giant batter. Anderson pops the third in the first inning. Single the center to drive in a run in the second to a walk in the fourth. Facing Bob Miller in relief of Doc Ellis here in the bottom of the sixth. As the Pirates lead four to two, the Giants have Gallagher at second, Fire at first with one out. Miller ready. Pitch to Henderson. Fastball low, ball one. Miller staring in at Tag Crawford. Miller looks at second, delivers. Drive foul past third. Henderson flashed one on the ground just outside the line at third. One count on Kenny Henderson. Miller taking his time, does with the bill of the cap, checks Sangian for a sign. Gallagher from second, fire from first. Fits to Kenny, a let up outside ball two. Miller drops behind on Henderson, two balls and one strike. Miller six. Low ball three. Miller doing what a good relief pitcher is supposed to do, keeping the ball down, but a couple of pitches a little bit too far down for the Pirate Stars. Three and one to count on Henderson. Gallagher a lead at second, fire away from first. Three one pitch. Low ball four. Henderson walks to load the bases with one out. Brings up Tito Fuente. The candlestick park crowd starts the chant of Tito. Tito, Tito. Fuente single and scored a run in the first. Slides to center in the second, slides to right in the fourth. Miller asking the dugout if he should pitch from a windup or a stretch. They got him to go ahead and use the windup. Bases loaded, one out, bottom of the six. Pirates lead four to two. Miller from the full windup delivers the Tito. Popped up foul, might be playable for San Gian. Coming over, it'll be back into the stand. Go 
20 is leaning on the bat outside the batter's box. 0 and 1 the count. One out, the base is loaded. Giants down by two. Four to two in the sixth. Miller checking with Van Gaan. Veteran right-hander starts the windup. The pitch to Tito. Popped up foul, out of play again. Strike two. This one directly in back of the plate. Miller quickly in front of Fuente. 0 and 2. Gallagher's fire and Henderson lead away. Miller winds and delivers 0-2. Outside of fastball, Sanguian looks at third, does not throw. One and two count of one is Miller in back of the mound. Walks back up to the rubber. Okay, whatever sign Sanguian passes along, the one-two pitch to Tito. Swung on and missed strike three. Wendy is chasing a high pitch and didn't get it. Well, Miller comes on. Gets Duffy on strike. Walks in as it now strikes out for Wendy. And with two outs, it's up to Willie Mays, the Giants captain. Mays doubled the left center to drive in a run in the first. Popped the first in the second and popped the first in the fifth. Willie won for three. Miller and Mays have faced each other many times. Gallagher down the line at third. Fire away from second. Henderson from first time is called at the plate. Now Miller wants to talk to the shortstop Hernandez and the catcher San Gian. Sanguian back behind the plate. Hernandez back at shortstop. Mays in the batter's box. The three runners start the lead. Miller will continue to work in the full windup. His first pitch to Mays. Roll a fastball. Ball one. Sanguian gesturing out to Miller as he returns the ball. Sanguian catchers that can really present a low target. Sanguian gets down lower behind the plate than any catcher you'll ever see. Anyone I've ever seen anyhow. The 1 0 pitch to Willie Mays. Lying in the right center field. Clemente on the run. He'll be there. He's got it. Mays hit it well, but Clemente picked it off in right center field to retire the side. The Giants in the sixth, no runs on one hit. No errors. Three runners left on. At the end of six. The Pirates four and the Giants two. Don Carruthers takes over the Giant mound starting the first half of the seventh inning after a tremendous job of relief clutch pitching on the part of Bob Miller, who came in and struck out uh, Duffy on the bunted uh, third strike. And then after walking uh, Henderson to fill the bases, Tito Fuente striking out, and Mays then lining out, got a good piece of the ball, but uh, lined out to right field, and a great job of relief pitching by Bob Miller. So the Giants are still two runs down as we start the first half of the seventh inning, and Dave Cash now faces Don Carruthers pitching for the Giants. Carruthers thereby becoming the fourth Giant pitcher of the afternoon. Preceded, of course, by Cumberland, the starter, then Barr and McMahon. Don Carruthers now pitching against Dave Cash, starting the Pirates' seventh inning. Dave has two singles in three trips. Up for a fourth try, he is now four for eight in the series. Swung on, a ground ball over the bag, fair ball down the right field line. Cash takes the turn, coming up for the ball. Kingman throws it in towards second base, and in with a sliding double is Dave Cash. That ball hopped right over the bag at first base. McCovey couldn't get it and cashes on with a double. 
Cash is hurt out there as he uh, slid into second base, went over the bag. He's up now walking around and coming out of the Pittsburgh dugout, the Pirate trainer, to see if Dave is okay. Today's game is being brought to you by Chevrolet's 1972 cars, along with Ham Fear and Allstate Insurance Company. John Carruthers making his first start, of course, in the playoff series. Was a five and three. Uh, Muckner had a 5-3 and three mark for the Giants during the regular season. Posted an ERA of just about four runs per game. 4.03 to be exact. Al Oliver, meanwhile, is being called on now for pinch hit duty. Coming in for Gene Klein. Oliver is a left-hand batter, of course. And Danny Murtaugh wants a left-hander swinging against the right-hander, Don Carithers, in this situation. Oliver will thereby take over for center fielder Gene Klein, who is out of it after three trips to the plate today. And Gene has done his job for the Pirates, having provided them with a home run in the fifth inning in one of three trips. Here's Oliver ready. Al had a key blow yesterday and drove in two Pirate runs in the first game. Here's the pitch. Carithers uh, fires the fastball low, and the count is ball one. Down a 6 Two right-hander in his second year in baseball, second year with the Giants. That is his fifth year in baseball, second year in the majors, and both seasons, of course, with the Giants. Keeping uh, active down in the bullpen now for the Giants. Somebody's up and working. The pitch is a fastball through there for a called strike, one and one. That's Ron Bryant uh, warming up down there for the Giants, the southpaw. Roberto Comandi is on deck. Willie Sargill will follow. And, of course, Sargill, a left-hander. Carruthers working with uh, Dave Cash off second base. Nobody out. Start of the seventh. Pirates lead 4-2. Swung on. A fly ball driven into center field. May stumbles. Takes the ball on the hop. Around third base comes Cash. Holds up the throw in to head him off. And the Pirates have two aboard. May started to come in. He might have lost that ball in the sun. He held up all of a sudden, then uh, lost his footing for just a split second. Before he could recover, the ball was in front of him for a base hit. At the same time, Oliver taking the turn at first base. He stumbled as he went over first. And all of a sudden, the Pittsburgh trainer has two cases on his hands, having uh, looked over Dave Cash a moment ago and now talking over there to Al Oliver. So the Pirates put runners at first and third now with uh, nobody out and the power moving in and Roberto Clemente and on deck you got Willie Stargell. Meantime, Dick Dietz is going out to the mound to uh, talk with Don Carrithers. Danny Murtaugh comes out of the Pirate dugout and while they're uh, having some discussions over at first base and on the mound and uh, Murtaugh walking over to see whether Oliver is okay We'll pause briefly for station identification, this being the Golden West Radio Network. Bernard knows this. It is an astrological fact. The Giants are going to do it again this year, and today is the day on KSFO San Francisco. Danny Murtaugh talking with home plate umpire Shag Crawford as they walk back toward the plate. Assured now that Oliver is okay at first base. He, of course, wants uh, Al to uh, have complete control as far as the base running is concerned. Wants to be sure he was all right. And now Roberto Clemente steps in for the Pirates. Clemente has a single his first trip, then fly to right, and singled again in his third try. So it's two for three this afternoon. He's up there with Cash at third and Oliver at uh, first. Two men on, nobody out for the Pirates. This is the first half of the seventh inning, and the score reading Pittsburgh four and San Francisco two. Now Carithers is ready as he looks over at uh, first base. Here's the pitch. And swung on, a line drive in left field, a base hit out to the reach of Chris Fire. Coming across easily, Cash scores. Oliver stops at second base. And Clemente, getting his third hit of the afternoon, drives in the Pirates' fifth run of the day. And it's 5-2 to two in favor of Pittsburgh. 
Here comes manager Charlie Fox out of the giant dugout. Carruthers, so far ineffective on his first three batters. Three straight hits, cash is double, Klein, uh, rather Oliver's single. And now that ball was really tagged by Clemente, ripped back in the hole between Spire and Gallagher. No chance for Chris to get it, although he made a dive at it. Willie Stargell coming up. He's had Bryant, the left-hander, warming up out there. And uh, Charlie talking on the mound now to Don Carruthers, undoubtedly giving uh, Bryant plenty of time, as much time as possible, out in the bullpen. And Ron Bryant comes in as the fifth giant pitcher of the afternoon. who just joined us, uh, starting out with the Giants today. John Cumberland went to, into the fourth inning before Ray Lee worked three full innings, allowed three runs. He was followed by uh, Jim Barr, who worked uh, actually one plus innings and allowed one run and three hits. Third man in, Don McMahon. And McMahon, starting in the fifth inning, worked through the uh, last two innings, actually. Did a fine job in relief, actually, uh, pitching to six men, retiring all six, striking out two without a base hit allowed. And he was taken out for the pinch hitter in the Giants' sixth relief by Carruthers, who failed to get anybody out in the three men against whom he pitched. And Ron Bryant takes the mound now for the San Francisco Giants. Bryant, the left-hander, well-known up around Davis, California. His fourth year in the majors, his uh, third year with the uh, Giants. Pitched actually in one game in 1967, done in 68. Finished up this regular season this year with seven victories and ten defeats. He posted an ERA of uh, about three and three-quarter runs per game, 3.79. Ron broke into baseball seven years ago. 23-year-old southpaw from Davis, California, Ron Bryant, now takes over the mound from Don Carrither, the fifth giant pitcher. So... Whereas uh, manager Charlie Fox has been able to rest his bullpen, yesterday, of course, Perry going the distance, and then on uh, the Thursday night came down in San Diego when Juan Marichal pitched the entire game. This is the first time he's gone to his bullpen, and today he's now into his fourth reliever. Of course, the Giants will have a day off uh, tomorrow, traveling over to, to Pittsburgh, and uh, Juan Marichal slated to work in that ball game, the third game of the playoff series. As Bryant takes over the left-hander on the mound, Jim Willoughby is now taking his place in the giant bullpen. He is, of course, a right-hander. Jim Willoughby warming up down there for San Francisco. And it's a tough spot for Ron Bryant. He comes in with two men on, nobody out, and facing powerful Willie Stargell, the left fielder. Stargell so far is hitless in three trips today. He was over four yesterday. He is over seven in his the first seven trips in this series. Bryant looks in for his time now from Dick Deep. As Oliver leads off second, Clemente's off first. The stretch by Bryant. And here's the pitch. A uh, fastball down low beneath the knees, and the count is ball one on Willie Stargell. Two runners again take their lead. Nobody out here in the Pirates' seven. They lead the Giants five to two, trying to even this series up. Here's the stretch by Bryant. Looks back at second base. Pitches a curve through the knees for a called strike. One and one. If Bryant has had uh, any real trouble this year, it's been getting his curveball over, and if he has good control of it, he can be tough. Ron looks in there a long time. Now he's ready. The runners lead off, first and second, and uh, fakes the second base, chasing Oliver back in. Bryant stepped down off the mound and uh, faked his throw to second base. Fire coming up behind Oliver. Again, Ron ready as Sargell waits at the plate. The stretch, the pitch, is a curve low and outside, and the count is 
Ball two, strike one on Willie Stargell. Bob Robertson is on deck for the Pirates. To be followed then by Manny Sanguian. Oliver and Clemente again lead off as the Bryant checks them. The left-hander comes to the plate. Fastball through there for a call strike. Just above the knees, and the count is two and two. As Bryant keeps that ball down low on Stargell. With three hits in this inning, the Pirates now have a total of 13 in this game off the five giant pitchers. Giants have uh, six so far off the two Pirates. Here's Bryant ready. Sarge will wait as Ron pitches the 2-2 pitch. It's one on a miss. He struck him out. The Bryant comes in to face Sarge, his first man. He strikes out. And Sarge becomes the ninth strikeout victim this afternoon of Giant pitching. Let's call received ready hit and was received rudely by the Brian Finn Davis and Mike Howell. And number 51 Bale Wilson reached the through to their meeting. Four. And returned into the Baltimore Park. Park got a couple. As did McMahon. And now Brian gets his first man. Bob Robinson. From there, Leroy Kelly circling into the end zone. Five pitchers were blocked. Doubled in the second inning. Scored the first five and one. He then hit a home run to lead off the fourth and struck out of the fifth. So Bob is two for three. Last week against the Jets, Norm Blue Oliver, has set a cold rushing record, record gaining 198 yards. But against the Browns and number 80, Turkey Jones, it was a different Brian story. Back at second base, pitches a fastball down low for the ball. Number 35, a both Scott and Leroy Robert. Kelly did not run wild, but they did what had to be done. Back for the Pirates. The double audio you're hearing is the fault of the station. Uh, has nothing to do with uh, our duplicating techniques. And Kelly accounted for both Cleveland touchdowns. Shading Robertson for the left side of the ball. In the end, two mistakes almost cost Cleveland the game. A slow curve, slow on, throw deep left field, going back for the three. Number three, Chad Hendricks, Bobby Don Cockcroft, punt, and the human bowling ball, number 48, Don Nottingham, turned it into a six-point play. With four runs in this inning, now leads the Giants by the score of eight to two. Near the end of the game, number 22, rookie uh, player Scott, over for Bob Robert the Brown in precarious field position by intercepting a fourth and 17 soon. pass at the that Cleveland puts the Six. Giants in a bad hole now. But the Browns run doggedly tough through the grim afternoon and won a 14-13 upset victory over the world champion Baltimore Colts. Andy Nick Storch, his second success in two tries, as the new head coach in Cleveland. Sandian's first pick is the ball low. Here's Bryant's next pick inside. And the count is ball two. No question about that one. As a matter of fact, Ken Henderson stayed right where he was, right in his track. He just merely turned his head and knew that one was gone the moment he saw it. Pirates now with eight runs on 14 hits and no errors. The Giants with the two runs on six hits and no errors. Giants scored first this afternoon, led one to nothing. Then eventually led two to one. The Pirates tipped the lead in the fourth inning, and they have not been headed since. The next pitch swung on, a drive to center field. May steps back, now comes in a set, makes the catch, and there are two down. Still away as Van Gien flies out to center field, and that brings up Rich Hepner. Hepner's been up twice since taking off. To the first base, Jackie Hernandez stepping into the batter's box for his fourth trip of the afternoon. Hepner's okay, tossed down to first. 
Hernandez has been up three times. He's had a single, driving in a run in the fourth inning. Previous to that, he struck out, and since then has fouled out. So Hernandez has won for three. As Rich Hefner now leads off first base with two men down for the Pirates. Four runs in in this big seventh inning. Here's the pitch. A called strike. Fastball in the outside corner. Baltimore scored four times in its seventh inning today to beat the uh, Oakland A's 5-3. to three. Now Bryant again works with Hefner leading off first base. The pitch. Hernandez takes a curve, breaking in too tight, and the count is one ball, one strike. Pirates into the tail end of their uh, batting order now with Bob Miller, the pitcher on deck. They started this inning with leadoff hitter Dave Cash's double, and have scored four times. Here's Bryant looking at first, the pitch, a called strike across the knees. Nope, it's one and two, the count now on Jackie Hernandez. Hebner again takes his leadoff first, Bryant pitches. Swung on foul back over the screen. And the count is still one and two on Jackie Hernandez. Checking that count, Stag Crawford indicates two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Now the stretch by Bryant as he looks over at first base. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled out of play again off to the right side. And it's still 2-2 two and two on Hernandez. Jackie's 11th year in baseball is 6th in the majors and his first season with the Pirates after earlier service with the Angels, the Twins, and the Royals in the American League. Brian taking his time, steps to the rear of the mound just a moment, brings that foot back up now. Out of the box for a moment is uh, Jackie Hernandez. Now Bryant ready, there goes Hebner off first base. Two men down, the pitch swung on, again fouled off by Hernandez, back over to the screen, up behind home plate, and the count remains two and two on the Pirates shortstop, Jackie Hernandez. In case you've not yet heard today, the 49ers beat the Philadelphia Eagles by the final score of 31-3. Just about everyone who remembers 1970 will recall that John Brody's favorite partner was another... Again, Bryant's ready. Hefner leads off first to pitch to Hernandez. The curve inside, and the count is full of three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Dean Washington may still be John Brody's favorite partner. But now there's a new Washington to watch. Eight to two. Pirates lead after scoring four times in the seventh inning. And last Sunday, and with a three and two count on the Hernandez, Hefner will be going with two men down. The stretch, the pitch, there he goes. Swung on foul back over the screen again. As Hernandez is making Bryant work out there. Just getting a piece of it. Bryant gets a new baseball. Hefner comes back to first base. Now, Bryant ready, and Hefner leads off. The stretch, the pitch by Ron. There he goes, swung on, a ground ball out to fire is short. He's got it, Chris throws to first, he's out, and the side is retired. As Hernandez grounds out, who ended after a rather lengthy pirate session of the seventh inning, in which they score four runs on a total of four hits, there were no errors, and one pirate left to board. So in the sixth inning, the last half of the seventh inning coming up, and the score now leads Pittsburgh 8 and San Francisco 2. We're starting the last half of the seventh inning at Candlestick Park where the Giants trail the Pirates 8 to 2. Willie McCovey, Dave Kingman, and Dick Deep. The first three Giant batters to face Bob Miller. You know, when you think of the Giants being behind the Pirates by this score, it reminds me of that Saturday afternoon game, the last time the Pirates were in town and got off to a fast start of leading by some five or six runs. The Giants came back that day, and of course, they'd love to do it here this afternoon. Here's McCovey's first pitch, a fastball caught the inside corner for a called strike.
Nutter on the mound in relief of Doc Ellis. Did a fine job in relief. Coming into that sixth inning, throws a slow curve blow to McCovey. And the count is one ball, one strike. Again, Miller works with a curve that's inside. And the count is two and one on McCovey. Two balls, one strike. Of course, Miller is protecting Ellis's lead at this point. John Cumberland left the ball game with a 2-2 tie, but he was responsible for Manny Sandian being aboard, who scored the go-ahead run, and this is Cumberland's uh, ball game at the moment. A ground ball hit by McCovey, going over Dave Cash as it throws the first base, and McCovey is out on a ground ball to second. So there's one down for the Giants in the last of the seventh. McCovey grounding Cash to Robertson. Test batter for San Francisco is Dave Kingman. McCovey, by the way, had walked twice in three trips, one of those intentional. Kingman has singled, forced the rudder, and uh, walked the third trip, so he's one for two for the afternoon. Dave steps in with one down, nobody on, and the Giants seven. Miller pitches a called strike, letter high fastball. One strike to count on Dave Kingman. Next pitch the fastball high, and Kingman pulls away from it. Count is one ball, one strike on Dave Kingman. Warming up down there for the Pirates now. Luke Walker is one of those. And the other is Dave uh, Justy. Both of them right-handers for the Pirates. The pitch is swung on. Kingman misses, and the count is one ball, two strikes. Going down to the mile for a moment, Manny Sandin wants to talk to uh, his pitcher, Bob Miller. Here's the next pitch, a wide breaking curve outside, and the count is two and two on Dave Kingman. Next pitch, and swung on this. Kingman goes down on the third strike, and there are two down. Two away for uh, San Francisco in the seventh inning, and that brings up Dick Deep. That is now the third strikeout in uh, just the two innings in which Miller's worked. Deep comes in after striking out and popping up twice to first base, so Dick is hitless in three trips. Luke Walker is warming up down there. He is the southpaw, and uh, Dave Justy. The right-hander for the Pirates. Deep first pitch the ball, one ball. Two uh, men down, nobody on for the Giants in the seventh. The pitch is a call strike. Fastball just above the knees on Deep. One ball, one strike on Deep. Pirates eight, the Giants two, the last half of the seventh inning. That pitch to deep is just a bit low on a curve, and the count is ball two, strike one. Giants have had only one hit since the second inning when Chris Fire doubled, and it was Fire who got the hit since then. His single in the sixth inning, so Fire at pitching is certainly uh, beyond fault here this afternoon, Doc Ellis. Going for those first uh, five innings and taking over now, Miller in relief. The count is three balls and a strike on the deep. Takes the curve low. And here's the next one. A fastball high, and Dick gets the walk. So Deese is aboard with the second walk allowed by Miller since he took over. That's the sixth walk to a giant batter today. And it brings up Alan Gallagher, who is 0 for 2 after grounding out the first time and then flying out. His third trip in the sixth inning, Allen was hit by a fifth ball. He steps up there with a man on first, and two men down now for the Giants. There's Deep leading off first. The pitch is a tall strike, a fastball above the knees on Gallagher. One strike to count on Allen.
That's pitch to Gallagher as they called strike on the outside corner. Beautiful wide breaking turn thrown that time by Miller. And the count is two strikes on the Giants' third baseman. On deck to the get group is Chris Fire, who's led the Giants at the plate today with those two hits and three tricks. That's pitch to Gallagher. A curve up high. And the count is one ball, two strikes. Walker and Dusty continue to warm up leisurely in that uh, Pittsburgh bullpen. As Miller's ready, beats off first base. The pitch swung on, fouled off, back up over the screen. And the count is still one and two on Alan Gallagher. Robertson not bothering to uh, hold the pin at first base. This big lead is 8-2 at the moment. He's playing a bit off the bag at first. As Deep takes the bigger lead, here's the stretch. And the pitch is a fastball on away, and the count is 2-2. Two 2-2 and two. Two and two on Alan Gallagher. Next pitch is a curve swung on, a high fly ball in the short left. Going back, Hernandez to shortstop. He's got it right on the edge of the outfield turf and has it for the third out, and the side is retired. So the Giants are harmless in their seventh inning with no runs, no hits, no errors. The one man, these two walks, was left on. We go into the first half of the eighth inning now, and the Pirates still hold that commanding lead, Pittsburgh 8 and San Francisco 2. Into the first half of the eighth inning here at Candlestick Park, as back on the mound for the Giants, the fifth pitcher of the day, Ron Bryant, and he'll be facing Bob Miller of the Pirates, who is only the second player on the hill for the Pirates this afternoon, Bob Miller, and his first fifth of the plate. Bob came in to relieve Doc Ellis in the Pirates' sixth inning. And this is his first trip. Bob Miller. So far in the first seven frames, the Pirates have uh, eight runs on 14 hits and no errors. The Giants, two runs on six hits and no errors. Here's Bryant Ruddy. Bob Miller steps into the batter's box. Miller, the first man up, to be followed by leadoff hitter Dave Cass, and then Jim, uh, rather, Al Oliver. Here's the pick. A fastball swung on, popped up in the short right, going back. Is Tito Poletti, but written. Tito has it for the out. There's one man down. Miller popping up to Tito Poletti. For the first out, Dave Cash, the next batter. And he's been effective at the plate against the uh, Giants today with three for four. Cash singled in the first, singled in the third, forced the runner in the fourth, and then doubled to start that rally in the seventh inning, checking across on a uh, single by Roberto Clemente. Here's Bryant going into the windup. Ron delivers. Swung on foul back over the screen. And the count is one strike on Dave Cash. Again, Bryant into the windup. The pitch is swung on and fouled back out of play over the screen again. And the count is two strikes on Cash. Giants now have some action in their bullpen. Again, Jim Willoughby is one of those. And Steve Hamilton, the left-hander, also throwing. Bryant with two strikes on Cash ahead of him now. One man down, nobody on. Pirate eighth inning. Here's the wind-up by Ron. The pick is swung on, driven to center field. May is going back to his right. He's in front of it now and makes an easy catch. And there are two down as Cash flies out to center field. Two away, and Al Oliver will be the next round. Before Al steps in there, let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. This is the year of the Fox, and this is the year of the Giants. And this is Jim Lang inviting you to join me morning 6 to 10 on KSFO San Francisco. 
This is Oliver's second trip to the plate this afternoon, coming in after Gene Fine started in center field. Takes the first pitch wide, a breaking curve thrown by Bryant, and it's ball one. Oliver figured in the seventh inning uh, scoring by singling to move uh, Cash on up to third base, and he was aboard when uh, Bob Robertson hit that free run homer. Six, inside the ball two. Oliver waits the next six thrown in there by Bright as a curveball down low, and the count is ball three. Three and nothing on Al Oliver. There are two pilots down in the eighth inning, nobody aboard, and they have a comfortable 8-2 to two lead here. Bryant again goes into the windup. Here's the pitch. Fastball is high inside for ball four, and Oliver gets the walk. That is uh, Bryant's first base on ball since he took over for Don Carruthers in the seventh inning. And you look all over your score sheet for a base on ball because you're scoring with us, and you won't find any until that point for the Pirates. They've done it without the help of any control difficulty on the part of Giant pitching, but the fact that they have picked up 14 hits, and that tells the story of the ball game. As here now with Oliver on first base is Roberto Clemente at the plate with two men down. Clemente has three for four, three singles, and a five ball to right field. He, too, was aboard after driving in a run in the seventh inning. He then came across on Robertson following Homer. The pitch swung on and fouled up to the stands on the right side for a strike on Roberto Clemente. Well, he was on deck, so Bryant is now facing the power. Stretched by Ron as Oliver leads off first. The pitch, a slow curve, is across the inside corner for a tall strike. Beautiful change up, hook throw that time by Ron Bryant. How many taking it, and the count is two strikes on Roberto. Dick Deep uh, goes out of the mound to hand the ball to Bryant as he's talking with him. Dick walks back uh, toward uh, home play. Giants will be leaving at 6 o'clock this afternoon, right after this ball game is over. And headed for Pittsburgh in the third game on Tuesday, where Juan Marichal will work. Now, once again, the stretch by Bryant. And here's the pitch. A fastball struck him out. Caught the outside corner. And got Clemente looking on a third strike. So the side is retired for the uh, Pirates in the race inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. And one man was left on. So we're into the last half of the eighth inning. And the score still 8 to 2 in favor of Pittsburgh. Last half of the eighth inning now for the San Francisco Giants. And the first batter in there for the Giants, Chris Spires, steps in, takes his first pitch up high for a ball. On the mound again, Bob Miller for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Had some very effective pitching from Doc Ellis and Bob Miller today. The pitch is in there for a call strike. One and one now, the count on Chris Fire. His fourth trip, Chris has been up three with a uh, double the first time, grounding the third, the second, singling the third time, so he's two for three and scored one of the two giant runs. The pitch is swung on, fouled off down to the right out of play, and the count is one ball, two strikes on Chris Fire. Miller's now working into his third inning. He came to the relief of Doc Ellis after two were aboard and nobody out in the sixth inning. That was a chance for a giant breakthrough, filling the bases with Fuentes and Mays coming up, but failing to do anything about it and leaving those three stranded. That was the second time today the Giants had left the bases loaded looking back at the first inning when they failed to break through for more than one run in that the case against Doc Ellis. The next pitch to fire is a curve wide, and that runs the count out to three and two. Three and two on fire. Bryant would be the next batter. That's Jim Hart coming down to the on-deck circle. Hart uh, coming in to pinch hit for Brian. The pitch is high for ball four, and Chris Fire gets a walk. In contrast to the great control of the Giants pitching today, as I mentioned, Bryant surrendered only the first walk to the Pirates in the last inning. That is the seventh walk yielded by Pittsburgh to Doc Ellis and Bob Miller. 
three of them now by Miller and four by the starter, Ellen. His action down there in that uh, bullpen again, Justy and Walker throwing down there for the Pirates. The pitch is a called strike taken by Jim Hart on the outside corner. Hart making his first appearance in the uh, playoff series. Off the back at first base for the Giants. Goes fire. The pitch to Hart. Swung on a ground ball to the left side. Taken by Hernandez. Throwing the second. He's out down to first. Double play. As Hart hit a sharp run of ball. Built for the double play to Jackie Hernandez. Who then threw to Cash and down to Robertson for the twin killing. That's the first one against the Giants this afternoon. And with two men down, that brings up Ken Henderson, leadoff hitter and left fielder. Ken is one for two with a couple of blocks today. His single in the second inning drove in the second Giant run. At that time, it was a go-ahead run when the Giants led it two to one. First pitch to Ken is taken for a call strike through the knees. And the count is 0-1 on Ken Henderson. Miller again pitches. Henderson swings at the high hopper down first. Coming over to cover is Miller in time for the throw from Robertson and the side retires. As Henderson grounds out to first base to end the eighth inning with no runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on. So it's into the top of the ninth now. The Pirates comfortably ahead by six runs. The score Pittsburgh eight and San Francisco two. Mom will be joining Bill Thompson over in Pittsburgh for the resumption of this series in Pittsburgh on Tuesday. As the Pirates come to the plate now in the top half of the ninth inning, ahead eight to two, and the first batter in there for the Pirates will be Willie Sargill, followed then by Bob Robertson, and the third batter, Manny Sanjian. On the mound now for the San Francisco Giants, taking over as the sixth uh, man on the hill this afternoon is Steve Hamilton, the veteran left-hander. Steve making his first trip to the hill in some time, as a matter of fact. First time, of course, in this series, and he'll face Willie Chargill. Hamilton, big tall left-hander, standing 6'7". His 14th year in baseball, his 10th year in the majors, and of course, a newcomer to the Giants this year after spending most of his career seven years in the uniform of the New York Yankees. Facing Willie Stargell, who's been up there four times today without a hit, striking out twice. And Willie is long overdue. He's 0 for 8 now in the series. Of course, his bat has not been needed the way things have been going today. The man on deck is the man who has uh, dealt the Giants a severe blow today with two home runs and a double, Bob Robertson, in those four trips. First pitch to Sargill is the ball. The next one, a curve break wide for ball two. Two and nothing to count on Willie Sargill. Hamilton, during the regular season, uh, posted four decisions for the Giants. Two wins, two victories. ERA up around three runs per game, 3.09. Here's Steve Ritty again. Winds and pitches. Curve that is uh, taken. Called strike, and it's two and one. Sargio checking up, thinking that was out of the strike zone. Two balls, one strike on Willie. Hamilton, again wide. The left-hander delivers a curve, but again uh, taken for a called strike. Two and two. Just about the same pitch, and again, Sargio looks around at Shag Crawford. It's two balls, two strikes now. Hamilton has his side from base into the windup, and Steve delivers. A curve swung on a miss. He struck him out. And Sargo goes down on a third strike for the third time today. That is the 11th strikeout posted on the uh, Pittsburgh score sheet today, and the first, of course, for Hamilton. Bob Robertson comes to the plate. He's been a one-man wrecking crew for the Pirates here today with a double, then scored in the second inning, hit a home run to lead off the fourth, and hit a three-run home run in the seventh inning. As Robertson is ready to pitch, he takes the call strike, a curve across the inside. One strike to count on Bob Robertson. Robertson, therefore, has scored three runs today and driven in three. 
The only time he failed, he struck out. So he's three for four, and now five for eight in the series. The pitch is a curve that misses inside, and the count is one ball, one strike. One man down, nobody on here in the ninth inning for the Pirates, and they lead the Giants by the score of 8-2. Now Robertson again ready at the plate, cocks the bat, and here's the pitch. Swung on, drilled foul, back over the boxes behind third base, and the count is 1-2. and two. Infield uh, swung way over toward the left side, playing Robertson to pull that ball. And in deep left is Ken Henderson. Again, Robertson ready. Here's the wind-up by Hamilton. The pitch is swung on, hit deep to left center field. There goes Mays back for the wall again. It's going, going, and that one is gone. And Bob Robertson has hit his third home run in this ball game today. A drive deep over the left center field screen. And Robertson continues his mastery of giant pitching here this afternoon. Chubb Feeney, the National League president, sitting beside me. Chubb, I'd have to guess if that's a National League playoff record. It has to be uh, three home runs in one ball game for Bob Robertson here this afternoon. And it's an American League record, too. Nobody's done it in their league. Manny Sanguian comes to the plate as the Pirates with that run take a 9-2 lead now over San Francisco. Sanguian, who has two singles in four trips today, driving in one run and scoring one, faces Steve Hamilton with one down and nobody on base. Here's the pitch. One on, a ground ball that is foul back over to the right side. One strike to count on Sanguian. Rich Hepner is now on deck for the Pirates. Here's Hamilton's next pitch. A curve through there for a called strike. Count is two strikes on Manny Sanguian. Pirates have now scored one run in the, fir- in the second inning, two more in the fourth, one in the fifth, four in the seventh, and now the ninth run comes across here in the ninth inning. Here's the pitch. A fastball down low outside, and the count is one ball, two strikes. One and two on Manny Sanguian. Hamilton again winds up and pitches. The curve swung on, and Missy strikes him out, and there are two down. Hamilton gets his second strike out of the inning. That's the 12th K on the books today for the Pirates, and Rich Hepner steps in. He struck out twice. Been hit by a pitch ball and his three trips to the plate, so Rich is over two. Steve Hamilton ready on the hill. Gets the sign, goes into the windup, delivers a curveball that breaks wide, and the count is ball one. Two down, nobody on. Pirates. With a seven-run margin now with which to work against the Giants. The pitch is a curve that misses again outside. Ball two. Two and nothing on Rich Hepner. Jose Pagan starts at third base. Right-hand batter against the left-hand throwing John Cumberland. Danny Murtaugh going to his left-hand batting third baseman here with Hepner. And Rich swings and misses a curve and the count is ball two, strike one. Hamilton again ready. The giant left-hander winds and pitches. A curve swung on a miss for strike two. Two and two now on Rich Hepner. Pirates were able to get only one extra base blow yesterday. That being the uh, double by Dave Cash, but they have made up for it here today. Here's the pitch. A curve strikes him out as Hepner takes a third called strike. And uh, Hamilton ends up striking out the side getting uh, Stargell along with Sandian and Hefner, but uh, amongst those three strikeouts was a home run for Bob Robertson, his third of the game, and it's one run, one hit, no errors, and none left. So we move into the bottom half of the ninth inning, and the score reads now, Pittsburgh 9 and San Francisco 2. the last 
first half of the ninth inning here at Candlestick Park, and the Giants seven runs down, nine to two, needing some kind of rally to pull this one out. And Tito Pelini steps in to try to start something here at the expense of Bob Miller, who's been invincible since coming in as a reliever for the starter. Doc Ellis back in the sixth inning. He's worked three uh, hitless innings now. Miller has, although he's walked uh, three men in the three innings in which he's pitched. Bob Miller on the mound. Tito Pelini's at the, take, at the plate and takes the first pitch for a ball. Pelini's been up four times. He's won for four with a single and scored the first run of the game back in the first inning. Next pitch to Tito. He takes high for ball two. Giants have the power of their attack in here in this uh, ninth inning. But there's seven runs back, nine to two the score. The pitch to Fuentes is a called strike. Fastball on his knees along the inside. And the count is two and one on Tito. Next pitch, he steps back a bit from a fastball inside for ball three. Three and one on Tito Fuentes. Tito set again. Here's uh, Miller's next pitch. Fastball for a called strike. Hangs on to him with a fastball in the outside corner. And the count still full on. Fuentes at three and two. Giants only hit since the second inning was that single by Spire in the sixth inning. And Miller has choked them off since. Next pitch is swung on. A fly ball hit to short right center. Coming in from Eddie and five. And it drops in front of Oliver. In the second base goes Fuentes. He's safe with a double. Al Oliver and Roberto Clemente came into short right center but couldn't reach that ball. It was hit rather high. Oliver had pulled up a bit. He might have lost it. And Eddie Ray is in there for a two-base hit for Tito Fuente. Well, with one aboard, nobody out. Willie May steps up the plate. Willie McCovey's on deck and uh, to be followed by Dave Kingman. That brought some action down there in the bullpen for the Pirates again. Walker and Justy. The pitch swung on by May for a long way to left field. It is going back to the wall. It is going, and it is gone. A home run for Willie May, and the Giants have two runs. Willie May gets a hold of a fastball and rips it back into the left field seat for a home run, and it's a 9-4 to four ball game. Mays getting his first home run of the series, of course, driving in two runs on the play. As Tito Fuente scores ahead of him. And the giant lead has been cut to five. Nine to four to score, and here's Willie McCovey stepping in. Well, uh, a lot of the fans have departed Candlestick Park uh, an inning or so ago, but those remaining are uh, yelling it up now, hoping that the Giants yet have a chance with three to go here. Winning by five runs at the moment. Here is McCovey's first pitch for a ball. Miller delivers again. Swung on, line to center field, a base hit. And McCovey's on with a base hit. Now this ball game isn't over yet. Coming out of the Pirate dugout now is Bill Burden of the Pirate coaching staff. And I believe that's going to be all for Bob Miller. Bob, as I said, had uh, been in complete control of the situation over the Giants. And I believe that's Dave Justy coming in from the Pirate bullpen to take over the mound in place of Bob Miller. Miller came in to relieve place of Doc Ellis after Doc hit to Alan Gallagher in the and then allowed a single to Chris Fire. Miller took over. He is not allowed a base hit in the three innings in which he worked until Tito Fuente dropped that fly ball double into center field in front of Al Oliver. Mays then hits the home run and McCovey single and that's all for Miller. <laughs> Meantime, the Giants have gone to their bench to uh, rest McCovey. 
and Jimmy Rosario has gone into rut in place of McCovey at first base. Dave Justy comes in, spells that name G-I-U-S-T-I. Right-hander, 11 years in baseball, 9 years as a major leaguer, and this is his second year with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He won five games and lost six during the regular season and was just under three runs per game on his ERA of 2.93. Meantime, uh, going to work down there in the Pirates' bullpen, still with the left-hander Walker working, and now that's Bob Boos who joins him as a right-hander. As the Giants, now trailing by five, have a runner on with nobody out, and stepping up next will be Dave Kingman. Jesse, stockily built fellow, stands 5'11", weighs in at 195 pounds, 31-year-old right-hander, who spent most of his major league career with the Houston Astros, six seasons, pitching in Houston, and then to the St. Louis car. Dave is ready. Here's Dave Kingman stepping in for the Giants, with Jimmy Rosario now uh, at first base. He's running, remember, for Willie McCovey after Willie singles. The pitch to Kingman is a called strike. Kingman has singled. He's walked and struck out in four times. He's one for three officially. Again, Justy's ready. Here's the pitch. A fastball is taken high by Kingman, and the count is ball one and strike one. One and one the count on Dave Kingman with six seats on deck. Rosario running in place of McCovey, leading off first base. Nobody out, giant ninth inning, and the Pirates lead it 9-4. to four. Here's the stretch by Justy. The pitch is swung on, a high foul, back out of play, going over toward the left field seat. No, nope, that's in play yet. And under it, for the catch is Rich Hefner. The wind, that ball was hit high. It looked as though it were carrying back toward the seat. The fans were getting up ready to catch that themselves. The wind pulled that back in in front of the boxes, and Hefner just had enough room to get it. So there is one man down on the foul ball caught by Hefner at first. That brings up Dick D. For Dick's fifth trip, his fourth officially. He's had a single in three times, and then walked, he rather he struck out in three times, and walked the fourth time, so Deets is over three. Zario at first base now with one man down. Pirates nine, Giants four, last half of the ninth inning. As Justy's ready, here's the pitch. A curveball is blowing outside, and the count is ball one. Justy throws, in addition to a fastball and a curve, he throws a palm ball. Here's the next pitch. Fastball is high, and the count is ball two. Uses that uh, more or less as a change face pitch. Alan Gallagher is now on deck. Here again, the stretch by Justy. And the pitch is through there for a cold strike. Letter high on the outside. And the count is two and one on Dixie. Here's the stretch again by Justy, and the pitch is swung on, popped up behind the plate. Coming back is masked away is Zangian. Manny's under it and makes the catch, and there are two down. As Justy comes in and gets Kingman and Dietz on foul balls and now takes on Alan Gallagher. Gallagher is 0 for 3 on a fourth trip. He was hit by a pitch ball, rounding out, flying out twice. Alan steps into the batter's box. And the Giants are down to their last man with Rosario at first base. And Dusty trying to end this one and even up the series now. Here's the pitch. A curve swung on. A miss for a strike. One strike account on Alan Gallagher. Taking his lead off first base goes Rosario. And here's the next pitch. A curve that breaks wide and low outside. The count is ball one and strike one on Allen. Willie Mays, when he got that two-run uh, homer in the ninth inning, picked up his third RBI of the afternoon, so he figured in three of those four giant runs. 
Next pitch is a curve down low. And the count is ball two and strike one. Giants started out in a hurry in case you just joined us, scoring in the first inning. Took a lead, had the bases loaded, but left those three men on. Eventually led two to one, and then the Pirates took over and have led since. Here's the pitch by Jutsey. A fastball inside. Almost hit Gallagher. He started his stride and then had difficulty pulling back. The count is ball three, and strike one on Alan Gallagher. Rosario again leads off first base. Justy trying to end it. And even the series. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled off, and out of play to the right side. Up into the seat behind first base. And the count goes full of three and two. Three and two, two out. Rosario, of course, will be running with the pitch. Nine to four the score. Giants scoring twice in their ninth inning after trailing 9-2 going into this frame. And Rosario now leads off first base. As Justy checks him, there he goes. The pitch swung on, a ground ball hits the short. This could be it. Hernandez has it. He throws the first, and the ball game is over as Gallagher grounds out the short to end it. So in the ninth inning, the Giants fall short by five, even though scoring two runs on three hits. There were no errors, and the one man left on. So the second game of the National League playoffs has come to an end here at Candlestick Park with the Pirates evening up the series after losing yesterday 5-4, come back and beat the Giants in this second game 9-4. Now this is Don Klein sitting in today for Lon Simmons and with Bill Thompson, our producer Chuck Sugg, reminding you to stay tuned for the Giants Clubhouse, which follows and inviting you to be back with us on Tuesday for the third game of the series between the Pirates and the Giants. For the Giants and Pirates game from Pittsburgh, broadcast time will be 10-10 in the morning, 10 minutes after 10 here in San Francisco and on the West Coast. Our engineers today were Rick Smalley and Walt Lee. The final score again, the Pittsburgh Pirates 9 and the San Francisco Giants 4. And that concludes another Giants baseball broadcast. Today's uh, game brought to you by the more than 23,000 standard stations and Chevron dealers across the country. Serving you Chevron gasolines with F310, the Action Age gasoline. By the people at Pacific Telephone who remind you when it comes to communications, we're here to help. And by Chevrolet with a reminder always to buckle your seat and shoulder belt. Also by Gillette Platinum Plus Double Edge or Injector, both with platinum smooth edges for smoother shades. By Allstate Insurance Company, with 120 offices in Northern California, ready to help you. And by Ham's Beer. Ham's staff and regular is brewed with only the pure natural things that belong in beer. So welcome to the big beer drinking brotherhood of Ham. This has been another sports presentation of the Golden West Radio Network. Home savings gives you the protection of America's largest, but there's much more. You get the service that made home largest. The people at home do more for you. Yes, we can set this account up so that you get the interest now, but the principal is held in trust for your daughter. Many home customers do that. It's a wonderful idea. Ask any home savings counselor about the many special accounts home offers. Home community services are important, too. That's really just a part of home scholarship programs. But this spring, home awarded 76 $500 college scholarships to high school seniors. For your savings, for your community, there is no place like home. Home Savings and Loan Association has convenient local offices to serve you, and wherever you travel in the state, any other home office will give you immediate service on your account. Only home gives you the protection of America's largest over $3.8 million strong. Giants Clubhouse is next with Lon Simmons and Bill Thompson. A wrap-up of today's game, scores of other games, and interviews with today's outstanding players on... KSFO in San Francisco. Welcome to Giants Clubhouse, brought to you by Western Airlines, the only airline featuring first-class leg space for every passenger at Coach Fair, and by Kilpatrick's Bread, the eight-hour loaf.
National League Championship Series is now even at a game apiece. The Pirates this afternoon defeated the Giants by a score of 9-4. to four. That coming on the heels of yesterday's opening game, 5-4 to four win for San Francisco. Contrast to yesterday's tight ball game, this one was that way only until the seventh inning when the Pirates scored four times to put it out of reach. The case of the Giants is... It's a lack of pitching and a lack of timely hitting, and I guess you could say that about any loss in a baseball game. Tomorrow and off day, as both clubs fly to Pittsburgh tonight. And the series resumes with game number three, and now for a certainty game number four from Three Rivers Stadium on Tuesday and Wednesday. Air time on Golden West, 10, 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. We'll have a wrap-up of today's game when we return to our Giants clubhouse in just one minute. Now this from Western Airlines. Now, if you all come this way, here we have Western Airlines Seat Department. Seats? Who cares about seats? Where are the jet engines? And a little boy will show you some engines right after this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the seats you see here were removed from planes when Western Airlines created all the extra leg space. The first class leg space you get in coach on every Western flight. I'm going to look for some engines. If you will take seats, you'll see we space them so you can feel the difference first class leg space makes. They could found the engines. Heading for the Pacific Northwest, there aren't many vacation spots that can beat it. And there's no one that can beat Western Airlines for jetting you there. Western offers many non-stops from San Francisco to Portland, Seattle, Tacoma, and Vancouver every day. For all the details, call Western or your travel agent. Today's second game of the championship series, John Cumberland, left-hander, the starting pitcher for the Giants, and right-hander Doc Ellis, a 19-game winner on the regular season, going for the Pirates. The Pirates threatened in the first when Cash slid off with a single, but Gene Klein struck out into a double play. Then Clemente had an infield hit, but Stargill ran it into a force out. The Giants took the lead in the bottom of the first, but when one out, Tito Fuentes had an infield hit, with the second on a pass ball, and scored as Willie Mays doubled the left center field. The Giants then had a big opportunity as Willie McCovey to an intentional walk. Dave Kingman blooped the single to center to load the bases. But Dick Deeds struck out and Alan Gallagher grounded out. So the Giants settled for a one to nothing lead at the end of one. The Pirates got even in the second when Bob Robertson led off with a double into the left field corner. And Robertson is a name you'll hear a lot of in the recap. Manny Sanguin singled the center to score him to tie it 1 1. The end of an inning and a half. The Giants went back in front in the bottom of the inning. As Chris Spires doubled the left center, was sacrificed to third by Cumberland, then scored on Ken Henderson, single to right center. In inning number four, Cumberland still on the mound for the Giants. Robertson led off with a home run, a high fly ball down the right field line that just got out of the park. Might have been touched by right fielder Dave Kingman as he leaped for the ball. When Sanguian singled, that was all for Cumberland with Jim Barr coming on. Barr struck out, pinch batter Richie Hebner. Sanguian stole second, and then Hernandez, the shortstop, singled him home for the second run of the inning to put the Pirates in front four to two. It stayed that way only until the fifth when Gene Climbs led off with a home run over the left field fence. After Clemente singled, Don McMahon came on to do the pitching for the Giants. McMahon, the third pitcher for the Giants at that time. McMahon pitched two perfect innings, avoided further scoring in that fifth inning. The Giants had a run at the Pirates in the sixth. Alan Gallagher led off against Ellis and was hit by a pitch. Spire singled the center for his second hit of the ball game. Bob Miller then came on to relieve Ellis. Frank Duffy was sent up to punt. Center's goal is 5-2. to Klein's home run gave the Pirates a 4-2 lead. They had scored 1 in the second, 2 in the fourth, and Klein's home run made it 4-2. With Gallagher at second, Spire at first, representing the potential tying runs, Duffy was up to punt. Could not, struck out attempting to punt on a third strike. Henderson then walked to load the bases, but Gwani struck out and Mays lined to Clemente in right center. And in the seventh for the Pirates, Don Carruthers took over the pitching. Cash doubled. Oliver, a pinch batter, single to send Cash to third. Clemente singled for a run. Ron Bryant came on. To replace Carruthers, struck out Willie Stargell, but Bob Robertson crashed a three-run homer over the left field fence. That made it an 8-2 to two. Pirate lead. And in the ninth, Robertson made 
facing Steve Hamilton. Get a home run to left center. His third home run of the ball game. He ended up with five RBIs on the day and scored four times. They had a nine to two pilot lead going to the bottom of the ninth. In that ninth inning against Miller, for one, he's got a blue double to center. Willie Mays cracked the home run over the left field fence. When Willie McCovey followed with a single to center, that was all for Bob Miller. And Dave Jusky, who had 30 saves on a regular season, came on for the Pirates. He got Kingman to foul out to the third baseman, Deeks to foul out to the catcher, and Gallagher to ground to short. For the final totals, the Pirates, nine runs, 15 hits, no errors, seven runners left on. For the Giants, four runs, nine hits, no errors, 11 left. Doc Ellis, the winning pitcher, and John Cumberland, the loser, will return to our Giants clubhouse in just one minute. For the backyard baseball fans, lunchtime is a fun meal. A cold sandwich, a cold beer, and a radio are all treats on a hot day. But the kind of bread you use can be a real treat, too, if it's right. At Kilpatrick's, they make bread like they're making it for their own kids. So you can believe they put a lot of care and attention into it. But that doesn't mean that Kilpatrick's is just for kids. It's the kind of bread that anyone can enjoy, with B vitamins, calcium, and iron baked into it that anyone can benefit from. And Kilpatrick's is an eight-hour loaf. That means that even though five hours is enough, they take an extra three to let the dough rise naturally and then to hand twist the bread. There's no skimping on anything, ingredients, time, or attention. Because Kilpatrick's, the eight-hour loaf stays fresh longer. And they make bread like they're making it for their own kids. We make Kilpatrick's bread like we're making it for our own kids. Something good for a baker. Kilpatrick's, the eight-hour loaf. Commodities on today's ball game. If you were to pick up a piece of paper and read that the Giants pitchers had combined to strike out 13 batters and walk only one, you'd think the Giants had a pretty good chance of winning. Well, I know that that's the totals registered by the Giant pitching staff. You've already heard the final score. The Pirates 9 and the Giants 4. Doc Ellis, the starter for the Pirates in contrast, struck out only one and walked four. Bob Miller in relief struck out three and walked three. The Giants are able to take advantage of scoring opportunities, twice having the bases loaded with only one out and failing to score either time. Another oddity, if you wish to call it that, this is the third year of the playoffs, both the National and American League. And in the previous two years, all of the championship series have been sweeps. The New York Mets in 1969 swept the Atlanta Braves. In 1970, Cincinnati swept Pittsburgh. In the American League, for two consecutive years, Baltimore has registered three game sweeps over the Minnesota Twins. Today in the American League, Baltimore came from behind with four runs in the seventh inning to beat Oakland. And that was the first game of their series as the game yesterday was rained out. They'll play again in Baltimore tomorrow. Then will not have an off day as that series will switch to Oakland on Tuesday. The Giants... And Pirates both fly to Pittsburgh tonight with tomorrow an off day. That series picking up in Three Rivers Stadium on Tuesday. Nelson Bryles from Chico and Santa Clara, right-hander, who has always been tough on the task when he was with the Cardinals and now with the Pirates, will be the probable starter for Danny Murtaugh's Pirates. For the Giants, it's the sense to be Juan Maritel. And with one bright spot coming out of today's activity, Bobby Bonds did not play in the game. But Bonds reported before the game that he is feeling much better. He did take batting practice. Very possible that Bobby will be available for duty by the time play picks up on Tuesday in Pittsburgh.